Hello, and welcome to our D&D Scarlands game, where we would usually talk about the wonderful land of Scarn, and it's full of whimsy, and trichogenesis, and yada, 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 all those things. But tonight, we are not doing that. Tonight, we are going to make you wait one more week to see what happens with the Kraken, as our lovely cleric, Sienna, is dealing with some things. So, we are going to wait another week, but... We're going to persevere and give you a little bit of a one shot tonight. Tonight, we're going to investigate the uh, in, into the past of some characters you have met in the story that has happened so far. The boat of mercenaries that our lovely group of heroes of Elysian have met, they need an origin. And tonight, we will discover that origin. This is the first mission they were all hired together for. They're going to go plundering into the Temple of Eternal Flame to stop the summoning of an ancient lord of elemental fire to come across the land and destroy things. Not all mercenaries are bad, guys. Sometimes mercenaries are hired for good missions. <clears throat> so we're going to meet our lovely mercenaries. And then now that our characters have played these characters, if they ever come across either battling against or with, uh, we'll have stats for these characters. So I'm taking today to make my players work for me. It's great. I recommend it as a DM. You should 100% do it. But before we get into that, we're going to do our usual thank yous and mentions of awesomeness that powers the show of Warple Tales. Uh, let's talk about Warple Tales itself first. You can find us all over the internet. We are on Twitch right here right now, of course, But and you should consider giving us a follow or subscribe to us. You can check out all of our social medias run by the lovely Ambrose. Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, all at Vorpal Tales. That's where you can get the updates about our cast, our goings-ons, cancellations, things like that. We have a website, VorpalTales.com, where you can get links to our affiliates and, as of uh, today, I think, uh, our up-to-date calendars. A Patreon and Ko-Fi, where if you feel so inclined, you can toss a coin to us in order to make more, better, and Vorpal Tale your content, which includes those schedules that you can see. I would like to thank Onyx Path Publishing for making an incredible world and setting to use to amaze and delight. To Astral Tabletop for being a virtual tabletop where we can see the baddies who look to waylay our heroes and get that sweet, sweet ambiance. I thank you goes to Vincept, a wonderful YouTube channel that has amazing music to set your adventure to. And of course, our fantastic sponsors. First, we have QEmpire.com, a small company making original dice and products for your favorite RPGs and card games. Use code VORPALTALES for 10% off. Also, Hit Point Press, known for their various reference cards, but also creating the Humblewood and Hecna campaign settings. Visit VORPALTALES.com, click on our affiliate link, and anything you purchase, a portion of it will benefit the show. And also, you know, Hit Point Press sponsors Critical Role, and they sponsor us. So, really, we're clearly on the same level if we have the same sponsors, is what that tells me. Uh, we also are sponsored by Jim Hammer and Sons, an RPG supplement store that has everything from Dex of Wonder to Dex of Illusion to Dice. Once again, you can use that discount code Warple Tales for 10% off. They also have, currently have a Kickstarter going called Lords of the Rolocalypse. You should go check it out. There's only a couple days left to go fund it. It's met its goal. It's hit like 10 stretch goals or something ridiculous like that. You should absolutely go back it um, because, you know, some people from Warple Tales might be mentioned in it. Who knows? Uh, and finally, we have our most awesome... Uh, sponsor Dungeon Crate. Uh, Dungeon Crate is a fantastic monthly subscription service where you can get fantastic things from minis to dice to one-shot adventures to really anything. Uh, it comes to your castle doors once a month. We did a lovely unboxing last episode that you can check out if you'd like. Uh, the wonderful things you get in a box. Uh, once again, you can use code VORPALTALESDC, that's VORPALTALES DELTA CHARLIE, all in capital letters, at checkout to get $5 off your first month of this new subscription. Alrighty, and with that out of the way, let's meet our merciful mercenaries who look to murder, message, meander, and muddle through dungeon. Please state your name, where people can find you on the internet, and who you will be playing tonight. Hello, everybody. My name is Steve. You can find me on the internet at Voodoo Arcade. And tonight I am playing. Mm, let me take a look at my random character sheet here. 
<clears throat> ah, I am playing Heckpot, Aracocra Sorcerer. Uh, yes, as real quick, sorry to interrupt whoever goes next, to, to touch on what Steve said there when he said random character, that is correct. <laughs> the gimmick tonight is that on D&D Beyond, which everyone should totally go check out and they should totally sponsor us because we're awesome and they're awesome. On D&D Beyond, you can select a level, a race, and a class, and then D&D Beyond spits out a character sheet for you. Uh, so they all got their character sheets 10 minutes ago. So. <laughs> and uh, with that, I believe I am up next to talk. Uh, so I am J3 Billion, otherwise known as John, and I will be playing Grunken, our Oathbreaker. You heard it right. Oathbreaker Goblin Paladin. <laughs> Those three words go together, I'm told. Yes, they do. One hundred percent, they do tonight. Oh, hell yeah, it's gonna be fun. <clears throat> like, what oath did you break? Oh, I swear, I swear, I'm not gonna steal it. I'm not gonna steal it. <laughs> Ten minutes later, dark power from beyond. <laughs> I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna eat the pie. I'm not gonna eat the pie. I'm not gonna eat. The pie. Son of a bitch. <laughs> All the right. Pie. I'm into it. Uh, nothing quite so flavorful. Friends, my name is Birdie. Uh, I am usually only here on Fridays because I like to be an internet ghost. Tonight I'm going to be playing Nemesis NRA, the uh, mind-addled sorcerer. Once I looked upon the future and I saw the end of all things. So now I'm just here to have a good time. Like Not you here do. for a long time, just here for a good time. <laughs> hey everybody, I'm Ambrose. My pronouns are here, they, whatever pops into your head first. And you can find me all over the internet as Am Changeling, because it me, Am Changeling. And you can also find me on Etsy at Neat and Co Designs, and tonight I shall be playing Hagios, whose pronouns are he, him, and he is a satyr, a ranger, but he may or may not think he's a tiefling. So we'll see how that goes. Hello all, it is me, Devin. You can find me online at Sword of Sullied. And tonight, my randomly generated character is a Yanti pureblood artificer. Name Snick. Fantastic. Oh, you such a snack, Devin. <laughs> uh, yes, so thank you, players, for introducing your totally uh, thought out, uh, long, long, intricate backstory characters. I really appreciate that. All right. So without further ado, let's get into tonight's game. Let me find the correct music for that. There we go. You all are mercenaries coming from very different walks of life. They've all been hired together by the same person, a mysterious benefactor who said, go, go to the temple of eternal flame. It is clearly marked here on your map. There is no way you can get lost or waylaid going there as there's definitely no monsters on the way there. Once you get to the temple, you're looking for an individual named Vanifer. She leads a cult, a fire cult. They're trying to summon a fire elemental lord back onto this plane, and we cannot have that, for if they were to return to this plane, everything would burn down to ash, including you. Do this for me, and I shall pay you in much, much gold, and also you'll get to continue living because you won't be turned into ash. All of you, swayed by that argument of gold and not dying, decided to go on this mercenary quest. You all look, took one look at each other, and... Magically, it was as if you were all best friends. You were like, these are the mercenaries I want to hang out for the rest of my life. We're going to be a mercenary band and start a company together. <clears throat> you went on the trek through the lands and found the Temple of Eternal Flame, just as it was told to you, clearly marked on your map, with nothing waylaying you along the way. It was almost as divine intervention struck, and when you were supposed to only go through one little dungeon tonight. <clears throat> There's some history to this temple. 
During the height of an ancient Dwarven regime, it was a fortress, served as a manufacturing center, where great forges and foundries butted up against all the natural resources necessary to craft weapons and armor, both beautiful and deadly. Lava flows from the volcanic rock below. It provided heat and material, and where the lava had flowed and then sank away again, rich veins of ore and gems were left behind in the natural tombs for the doors to discover and mine. For many centuries, the doors forged weapons, hardware, and magnificent treasures. The best of these they kept for themselves, of course. The rest traveled to the surface world, where merchants carried the dwarves' work far. In time, the city was abandoned, the forges grew quiet, the foundries cooled, and the dwarven masters left their workbenches to darkness and departed to other places. Vanifer, the cult leader, found this place and thought, wow, gee, lava, underground, fire? What a perfect place to have a fire cult. And so the evil tiefling decided to use her dark powers and connection to the elemental plane of fire to restart up the forges, start back up the lava flows, and start producing arms and armor for her evil fire cult. You have entered the fire cult successfully, or I'm sorry, the fire temple successfully, and have descended down into the main area of the temple as the above ground fortress area is just a shadowy, spooky woo kind of place to drive away the most uh, curious of adventurers with the uh, spooky woo-ness of it all. And you found the actual heart of where this cult would reside. Begin. <laughs> I pick Grunken up by his head. Little man! Put me down! Oh, I will, I will. I will put you down lower than you've ever Stop been. It. First That's what I hear you pulling, you're pulling my hair. Do Stop. something for me. I have to... Are you listening, Grunken? Only... How can I... That's... You're still pulling my hair. That's... Yep. That's how it happens. And I set him down. And then I lean. I'm like eight feet tall. So I lean way, way, way down. Hunched over on my muscles. And I go, Grunken. Grunken. He, he, he perks up. What? What? What I want you to do is I want you to march right in there. And you tell Valifor or whatever her fucking name was that I want to talk to her. Because I saw a prophecy, and these crazy bitches love to see a prophecy. Oh, pro pro what, what you can do prophecy? That. You can do that. You can go in, and you can tell her that I need a prophecy. Pro if you prophecy. don't, you're going to be in big trouble. Can I eat prophecy? Fuck yeah, you can, buddy. Oh, hell yeah! <laughs> as long as you can get her attention. <laughs> Preferably with no guards out here away from everybody else. I'll take a one on one date if I can have it, but fuck it. Bring the whole crew if you have to. <laughs> and I give him a little pat on his head and I shove him on his way. <laughs> I have Axel's questions. Okay. <clears throat> Drunken descends down the uh, entrance of the. Uh, what's this place called again? The Temple of Eternal Flame. <clears throat> um, can I, uh, you, you go ahead. Yes. Can ahead. I step up next to Nemesis? Sure. You know, kind of just kind of walk up next to Nemesis, a very tall, regal-looking elf. How tall? Elf tall. So. Elf know. tall. <laughs> okay, so I I put you my, know, my elf my, tall. I put my big muscular arm on top of your head. What's up, Squirt? Do, do you think he will come back alive? I don't know. <laughs> I, I didn't see that future. <laughs> uh, but either way, it's going to put a bee in their bonnet before we have to deal with him. I give him like a 5% chance that maybe she wants to come talk to us. 10%, they scramble themselves <laughs> up trying to find out where we're going. And we're going to sit right here and wait. Uh... I look at my wrist. I don't have a watch. Let's call it 15 minutes. <laughs> Very well. 
Anybody hungry? I just sent Ooh. our best snack off to die. <laughs> so, uh, make me something. Snack? Have you brought any snacks? For myself? Why would I bring food for you? I thought you were coordinating this gig. Why would I coordinate this gig when I'm not the boss? You're not the boss? Ooh. I have berries. You have berries? Every tiefling's favorite meal, yes! You said 15 okay. minutes? I'm just gonna make a quick little sundial while we're <laughs> waiting. You're making a sundial underground? Yes. Yes! <laughs> Incredible. Alright. Sure, I'll have useful sundial. <laughs> no, it. Oh, uh, no! Out of character. Make the sundial, but then cast Dancing Light and make That it was the plan. Yeah! <laughs> so, as you eat berries and craft sundials to use underground, uh, Grunkin, you march forward as ordered by your boss, apparently Nemesis. Uh, to get down to this beginning area, you had to travel through these twisting, turning lava tubes that meander beneath the surface for miles. And you've already traveled a few miles, uh, but the there's you have to continue forward. And there's numerous side tubes and old mining tunnels branching off every couple of feet or so into the darkness. Uh, and so you just start wandering down and you're like, Okay, gotta do my thing. And you just like start going down the tunnels and go down. Your little footsteps go. T -t 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 prophecy is tasty. Prophecy. I will eat. Go down to the next side tunnel. Next side tunnel. You guys, he's not gone very far. You can all see Grunkin do this. He just goes down every single side tunnel. He walks back through at some point, and I'm like, mouthful of berries. Hey, Grunkin, how's it going? About 20 ah! minutes. Of, uh, it's about 20 minutes of him nope. doing this, and he's only gone like 10 feet away with all no, the tunnels. No he's prophecy down. here. Uh, prophecy prophecy over, over there? Yes. Yes, prophecy over here. Follow me. Ah, Grunkin, show you. Brains are fried. After yes. going down about the eighth tunnel, Grunkin, you're like, hmm, I should just follow the path that has lit torches along it. I bet that's where the cultists go. Yes, cultists need light. light it does for take cultists, you about cultist light, cult fire, cult light, torch. Okay, follow the torch. Exactly. <laughs> it takes you about twenty five minutes to make that connection, but you're like, okay, I got it now. Follow the fire. Gonna... Yes, yes. Fire. Axe, axe, torch. I'm gonna take a torch. Torch. Put put axe on fire. Fire axe. You put Shit, the axe no. to the fi you put the axe to the fire, and you're like fire axe. That's the spirit, buddy. Show him how the it's axe fucking out. done. The axe is not on fire. I'm sorry, Grunkin. Damn it! <laughs> All right. Fine. Should we go stop him from getting his brains ate or whatever? Yeah. Well, Let's, when this yeah. finally gets started, I'm going to cast Dancing Lights and say, well, it only took him five, ten, five, ten, eight, ten minutes. <laughs> like ten minutes. All right. <laughs> Uh, it's actually been about 30-ish, but yeah, eight minutes. Um, <clears throat> you continue down the main path lit by fire, uh, and eventually the lava tunnels cease, and you come out into a true hallway. Uh, the ceilings of which, uh, this is just going to be general rules for the entire dungeon, we'll say, unless I have a state otherwise. The ceilings are 15 feet high. Uh, there are lights uh, uh, you know, everywhere, whether it be uh, a torch or continual flame spells, or things like that. Uh, these are pyromaniacs, so they like fire everywhere. Um, the first area you open up into is the entrance. Uh, the passage widens at this point with two large alcoves flanking the hallway. Loose piles of stone form barricades at the front of each alcove, angled to defend against intrusion from where you have come from. A path between the barricades leads to a wide descending staircase. No, oh, staircase. Okay. Um, stairs? Fire. You know? Fire? Is there any fire? Fire? Oh, there's tons of fire, buddy. The fire. The, 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 yeah, there, yeah, there's fire everywhere. Literally, like, this room. Oh, basically, shit. every room you come into, unless I say otherwise, is going to be brightly lit. I was I was following fire. Fire everywhere now. Yeah. Feels like home. Yeah. Stairs? Stairs. Path? 
Yes. Yes, it is very Nine Hells esque. You know, I can't help but notice we passed through passed through both a fortress and a barricade that were completely discarded. Well, as you come up to these uh, uh, barricades that are kind of flanking and making this kind of V shape to where the stairs are, uh, a couple of hobgoblins pop out from behind the barricades. Uh, they are wearing uh, this like all pure like red armor. Uh, with uh, the symbol, uh, like this fire symbol, kind of roughly drawn on the front chest piece of their armor. Halt! You make fire axe? They just look at so you're, you're in the lead, Grunkin, as you kind of been just like stumbling around here, and uh, they look at you being a goblin. They're just like, get, get, get back, get back in line. What are you, what are you doing? At? Get, get, and like one of them comes out and like picks you up like by the scruff of the don't, neck. Don't touch her again. Don't. And then the other ones kind of like move in front and they're just and, like to so the rest of you are just like pass what, phrase. What are you, what are you doing? being pulled further and further down the stairs. Stop. Stop. That's my arm. Oh, you go here. get him, buddy. I'm going to swing at him. Like, don't. <laughs> okay. Give me an attack roll. <laughs> uh, don't touch Grunkin. Uh, it's going to be a disadvantage because I'm going to say you're technically grappled. Grunkin. The password is spooky woo. Spooky woo, my axe to your face, the, bitch. The hobgoblins oh. look at you. They're like, the first, like kind of like the front one looks at the captain, and, he, and he's just like, "Did we change the password?" No, no, it's, it's not spooky woo. And they kind of draw their weapons. They're like, okay, "All right, oh, no more funny business." Oh, I'm gonna step up. Okay. Uh, so I step up. Um. A uh, fire genasi, obviously, okay. as I've always been. <clears throat> yeah, okay, so what you're saying here is that this isn't the password. Now you're confused as to whether or not that's the right password. If you gotta ask him what the right password is, then you gotta tell me what the password is. What's the password? The one that, like, was confused what the password is looks at the, just looks at the captain in bewilderment, like, uh, what do I do? You tell me the, the cat is just like <sighs> no good soldiers around here. Five. Obviously, I'm not telling you the password. You have to tell me the passphrase to get past. Then I look. Oh. At, I look at the other one. This guy don't know the motherfucking password. Look at me, fucking fire genasi at the temple of elemental flame. Go ahead, stab this guy. Stab him. He's a traitor. He doesn't know I'm the password. <laughs> me, me, meanwhile, uh, Grunkin, go ahead and take a swing at the guy that's like trying to pull you back in down the stairs. Can, can I make okay. a decision to convince this guy to stab his guy? Because uh, <laughs> we're gonna know see the how password? we're gonna see how we're gonna see how Grunkin's attack here goes because depending on how it goes, you'll have. You might have disadvantage of this persuasion. Okay. Uh, I, I would like to so... share that I just looked at my intelligence. It is a negative one. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, same, buddy. Same. So we're looking at plus eight. Wait. So really? Seven plus. Uh, okay. Fifteen. Fifteen to hit? Yeah. Uh, that does not hit. So you kind of like, you have your, uh, you pull your ax and you just like, hey, hey, let me go, let me go. And you just like try to take a swing at his arm and it connects, but you're not able to get enough strength behind it. So it kind of just gets like buried into his chain mail a little bit. And he still got you by the scruff of the neck. And he just like, he looks at you, looks at the ax in his shoulder, looks at you. Put me gonna, down. He's going to sh use the shove action, but I'm going to flavor it. He just tries to drop kick you down the stairs. <laughs> I'm grabbing onto this axe for all I can. <laughs> Falling down the stairs. <coughs> I like it. Uh, oh, wait, no. It's a, a shove. I believe the shove is actually a contested roll. Let me just double check. Yeah. That real quick. I think so. I don't know. Or maybe it's an attack roll. Uh, no, all of these guys in front of the stairs, except for the one that's dragging Grumpkin down. Uh, yeah, so only one kind of picked up Grunkin and started going down the stairs. Uh, and then there's two that are have come out and talked to you. One's just kind of a common soldier. One has the markings of a uh, captain. You're not sure if there's any others behind the barricades. Uh, yeah, Grunkin, I need you to give me 
um, a either athletics or acrobatics check. All right. So it's plus six. Uh, so 16 plus 6 is 22. Okay, so that does beat what he rolled. So he tries, he just drops you and tries to drop kick you down. He doesn't take into a plate the uh, plate armor you had molded to your butt cheeks, just in case someone <laughs> did try to do this exact movement to you. And his foot strikes plate metal, and you just, you just hear him, ah! And he kind of like starts doing the one foot hop thing where he's clutching his other foot, just going, ah! Ow, ow, ow. Sir, you uh, like consent's important, bitch. He does kind of just drop you prone on the stairs, though. You don't go rolling down or take any damage to your <laughs> prone stairs. Uh, so, uh, uh, Heek Pot, you had just finished telling, hey, stab this guy. And, uh, mm -hmm. and he, the soldier is like literally contemplating it, and you see him pull his sword out just a little bit more out of his sheath, <laughs> like, yeah, maybe I should stab my captain. <laughs> And he hears the cries coming. You all hear the, uh, you know, shout. You've been hearing the shouts of Grunkin, but now you hear the sound of like metal hitting metal, and then the screams of agony, and then the two hobgoblins kind of look at each other, and they look at you guys, and they kind of, and you kind of all do that thing where everyone's just looking at each other, when and then everyone just draws me. swords and starts attacking everyone and rolling. The <laughs> One at one. <laughs> Doom. Doom. Uh... By the way, uh, so I, I asked this in our, our Friday round two, and uh, Steve has cast his vote. Audience, this character, should he have a surfer dude accent, a Scottish accent, or just my own voice? Steve has voted surfer. Sure, chaos I, is abundant. I'm, I'm voting surfer because you said you have minus one to your intelligence. So surfer dude, man, you're like totally this like tiefling. Like, yeah, dude. That's like kind of a harmful stereotype, bro. It is, but like <laughs> the spacing gives you time to think. Of like oh, but see, surfer girls are intelligent. Surfer guys. This is what Point Break taught us, is Lori Petty was like the only intelligent person in that movie. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, okay, so what do we got initiative-wise? I got an 11. 11, okay. I got a 21. Ooh, look at I you. I got a 15. Okay. Last two. I got... 21. I'm sorry. Okay. No, you're good. Got it. I kind of wanted to wait to last anyway, because uh, apparently the D&D &D gods, the chaos gods, have forgotten me with a strong two. Ooh, a uh, two total initiative. I like it. I'm doing well on initiative. Two initiative and you're starting prone. That's fucking rough, buddy. Oh, okay, they're going to have that. That's interesting. Uh... Okay, so yes. me, <laughs> give me bad. Uh, all right, uh, uh, Hagios and Heek, you can guys can duke it out on who wants to go first. I have a plus two modifier to my decks. What do you have? Uh, let's see here. Uh, plus four. Nope, you go first. All right. <laughs> oh yeah. <clears throat> so, I am going to. Look at them with my satyr eyes. Okay. And I will Yeah, tell it's, them. it's that moment where everyone has their weapons drawn and you can tell like there's 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 no turning back. Like they have decided, okay, these are definitely they they were outsiders to begin with and they don't know the passcode and something happened with the guy down there. Maybe he's not actually one of our goblins. Fuck it, let's just attack them, you know. What's the worst that could happen? <laughs> uh like you don't mess with a tiefling, my guy. Okay, like you just you just don't. 
and he's they gonna look at you, and then they look at your fur-covered legs, and they're just like, "Huh?" <laughs> he will take that moment to use his longbow. <laughs> okay, give me an attack. Oh my god, is that right? I, okay, so I rolled a nat twenty, and Devin informed me that my longbow is a plus nine to hit. So twenty nine? Is that correct? Like, well, the nat twenty does it right there off the bat. Okay, uh, and you are high enough level where you'd have two attacks a turn. So if you want, you can roll your second attack as well. Yeah. Sixteen. Uh, Sixteen does 25. not. Oh, oh 25 hits. Yes. Yeah, 25 sorry. Total. I rolled a 16. I had to do the mathy bits because, you gotcha. know. Gotcha. All right. So one one critical hit and uh, one normal hit. Go ahead and roll damage. Sweet. Okay. 1d8 plus. That is actually a 6 there. So. 11 piercing for the first one. Okay. And again, 11 piercing. Uh, that 11 was at the critical damage, so that'd be double it. Right? Uh, I don't know what the critical would be. Yes, Wouldn't yes. Be... So yeah, if that was just the damage, the 11 by itself, <laughs> then that would be doubled because it was a crit. Oh, oh so no, I, I did the addition. Oh, uh, okay. All right, it's perfect. a D8. Gotcha. All right. That I... uh, so 22 damage total. The arrow just goes straight through that uh, hobgoblin's throat and just... <laughs> And just falls onto the ground. How so kind of, he, bunga. He was like very curious. You called yourself a tiefling. Look at your legs, and that was his undoing. As that revealed the side of his neck, and he's put an arrow right through the gap in his armor. Uh, all right, uh, that was your action. Anything to do with bonus action or movement? Does ramming count as a bonus or movement? Ramming someone. Yes, with my horns. Uh, that would be an attack, I would say. Um, like to do that as part of your movement, I would say you would need to use one of your attacks to do that. Which oh, you have okay. both. But for, for, for future notice, you, you could do that if you'd like. I will say. Okay, cool. Yeah, it's on my sheet as RAM, and I'm like, yeah. Oh, if it's on your sheet, a... it, should, it should say if it's an action or a bonus action. Oh, no, but I have Slayer's Prey. That's... Eh, I'm not going to worry about that right now. Yeah, I will I will scoot up a bit closer. Um, but that's about it. Uh, yeah, ram is, a, is, a, is an attack. So, But for future notice, you can absolutely ram someone. I can be a butthead. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, it is Heek's turn. I'm in... I like, I'm right standing on... I'm standing right next to the uh, Yeah, you... Yeah, you had stepped up. You're standing right next to the uh, dead hobgoblin. The captain's probably like five or ten feet away. Oh, oh so, I have, so I don't have anyone up in my face. Okay. No, no one is currently right next to you. Uh, the captain is, uh, we'll say ten feet away. He kind of just, you know, stood behind and was just kind of observing at that point. Okay. Then I will move so that there's more... Um space between us um but stay in range of my spell casting third level you gain two of the following meta magic options of your choice so my two meta magic options according to my random character sheet <clears throat> extend and power when you roll damage from your spell you can spend one sorcery point to re-roll up to three of the dice you must use the new rolls or i can extend i can extend the duration Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Alright. You know, I'm just gonna put some space between me and him. I'm gonna shoot him with a spell. Okay. Let's shoot him with You know, these are these are these are entrance guards. These let's not do anything too hasty here, shall we? Ray of Frost. Okay. Uh, Ray of Frost is an attack roll, so go ahead and give it to me. Yes, it is. So, that's going to be a d20. I rolled a 13, and my two hit is a 6. So, does a 19 hit him? Yes, it does. Okay, go ahead and roll some damage. Gonna be 2d8 damage. Uh, 
That is eight total. I would like to. Sp I'll go with the eight damage. Okay, eight damage. The uh, you conjure this kind of bluish, swirling magical energy, and wash it over the hobgoblin captain as uh, bits of ice and frost stick to his uh, uh, half plate armor. Uh, and, and you can see that some of it digs in and kind of you can see that blood starts to trickle out of the sides of his breastplate. And as I am doing that, since I am a fire ganasi, wait, hold on. Hold up. What are the types of ganasi? The other types? Yeah. Earth, air, and water. So, as uh, as I do this um, ray of frost, um, the elements. Yes, yeah, so the fire ganasi does the frost. Does spell. the frost spell? The elements of me that make me a fire ganasi start to turn blue, and I actually turn into a water ganasi as I shoot this. Okay. Spell. Flavor text. <clears throat> He snarls, ah, yes, I knew it. Water cultist and infiltrators. Guards! As he yells behind him. Uh, anything else I do with your turn? No, I've moved past spell. I'm good. All right, Snack. Uh, same as uh, Pot. I'm not going to waste it on her. These are entrance guards, so I'm just going to go to that hop up captain, too, and I'm going to just... You don't look well. Poison spray. Okay. Yeah, I believe is that a, that's a save. I think. That is a that's save. That's a con save. <laughs> the UNT runs up. Poison spray. <laughs> Ooh, not good. Not good. Con save. Fuck. Got to be a 15. Would you Big say? four. Big Ooh. four. Would you, would you say that's <laughs> pocket poison? <laughs> pocket poison. Flavor text it for sure. Pocket poison. <laughs> Yeah, uh, it's 100% no, flavored. Oh there. my sweet god. Alright. So. I play a Dale Gribble DD character that just runs around and his spells are just pocket sand. <laughs> <laughs> spells that have a range of 10 feet or less. <laughs> All 10 feet or less. <laughs> Alright. So that's. Two die twelve, making sure because I haven't used poison spray in forever. That sounds right. And then <laughs> I have the additional die eight for my uh, artificer uh, thing. Yeah. So that's uh, a four, a one, and a ten. That means fifteen damage. Fifteen poison damage. All right. Okay. The uh, poison starts to seep in. You see uh, black veins start to be bulging and highlighting in his body, kind of originating from his nose and his mouth where he inhales your pocket poison. Uh, looking a little rough. Anything else you like to do, Snack? Uh, no. I'm good. Uh, okay. Why do I even watch this at work? We're sorry, Alice. I... <laughs> <laughs> uh... So the captain's yell uh, <laughs> brings forth um, three more hobgoblins from behind the uh, barricades uh, that were um, that had not come out before, uh, and they will rush up and uh, let's see. So Snack moved back, or no, Snack moved up actually. Um, Heck moved back, so that would be Nemesis and okay. Uh, Snack will be closest, so two of them are going to flank Snack on either side, and then the other one is going to go to, uh, I guess Nemesis would be the second closest, along with, uh, yeah, we'll just say Nemesis, though, for funsies, because they're going to try to take out the big scary person. Uh, all right, so two attacks coming at uh, Snack from uh, the Hobgoblins. Get fucks with, as they as they as they as they pull out their long swords. Uh, God damn it, Patrick! 
Does a 15 the ch- hit? The chat 15 is all, does not. The chat is already <laughs> fucking evolving over here, and you're going to use the phrase, pull out their long swords. Yes. <laughs> yes, I am. All right. It's all Where's been the spray bottle? God. <clears throat> okay, so they both pull out their long swords, wave them at you, and attempt <laughs> to slice you with them, uh, but they both miss hor- horrendously. Uh, you're kind of just too snack like. Your just... eyesight sucks. One of them actually is like mid strike, and they just look into your eyes, and they just kind of stop. Like, okay. Uh, uh, Nemesis, you were next. Okay. I thought some of them were attacking me. Have they changed? Oh, that's their right. Minds I forgot. I, I'm sorry. I forgot the. I forgot the one that was attacking you. That's oh right. man! You can hear me. Hit they, me with your swords. Uh, I, I'm, I'm a guessing... sorcerer. I'm guessing a six doesn't hit you. No. Okay, yeah. That, that we'll guy say, misses too. Dude, dude swings it at me, and I just kind of reach Ooh. down and grab his hand. <laughs> and then I'm going to reach up on my turn to the nearest torch way above him, and I'm just going to scoop the flame out of it with control flames <laughs> and hold it in front of my face. <laughs> Do you see what I see in the fire? You hear the sound of uh, a liquid hitting metal as you realize he's starting to piss himself. Great. You want to see it burn too, right? I don't even like this cult. We were hired. Oh, man, then fucking leave. <laughs> it's your money or your life, man. Give me an intimidation check. And so I'm, check. I'm gonna, I'm gonna drop him and I will give you an intimidation check with my, my randomly assigned stats. Oh, it's actually not that bad. I was uh, really lucky. Were you lucky and get proficiency in it? Yes, I got proficiency, and I also have. I'm I'm a sorcerer with no charisma, Patty. That said, Don't a nat, me. A I nat did not twenty plus five. Nat Holy 20 plus five. shit! That guy finishes pissing himself, then proceeds to start defecating himself as he just like starts like squat running towards the exit. Like. That's just embarrassing. <laughs> I was going to run like, away to the back lines, but now it's kind of nasty back there. So I'll just kind of like casual walk further in. Uh, he's about to like go, like disappear down one of the uh, lava tubes that uh, hadn't, that n- none of you had gone down before. And he like stops, rem- remembers what you said, unties a pouch off of his uh, hip and throws the coin purse at your feet. And then continues to squat, run away. Does it avoid the puddle? Uh, we'll say it's like on the edge of it, so it's like starting to soak up a little bit of the urine. I pick it up and I hand it to Hagius. Okay. Hey, look, you we have, got paid early. You have a slightly damp coin purse with an unknown number of coins in it. Hmm. He'll just stuff it in his pocket. Okay. And then I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna use my movement to wade further in and just ignore everybody. Okay. Uh, we'll say that where you end up uh, allows you to still be within melee range of the captain, so you don't get an attack on opportunity against you. Um, however, it is the captain's turn, uh, and seeing you trying to advance through, uh, they will attempt to attack you. Um, I'm not going to use that die anymore. Or that die. It's a bit fucking <laughs> right now. Coward. Uh, Alright. He pulls out a great sword off his back. Um... And wow, it's really dark in here. I can't see. It. Wow, uh, I'm assuming a seven doesn't hit you. <laughs> Once again, he swings, and I just grab the blade with my hand. Hey, I'm not okay. interested in fighting, buddy. Does a Can twelve hit you? By? No. Damn it! So he's like, he swings. You catch the, the one of the giant uh, pieces of the. Uh, uh, cross guard with your hand and he tries to like yank it out and you see he's unsuccessful and he also is just like he's more resolved as he is the captain but he's like starting to get a little worried here that whatever you said to the last guy made him piss himself and now he's a little worried what you're going to do to him uh that's him that's them uh drunken it is your turn uh, you are prone right next to one of the regular hobgoblins. Uh, he hears the sound of combat from where he came from, so he has pulled his longsword out of its sheath. But you are right next to him. Uh, 
This is Grunkin, right? Yes, Grunkin. Grunkin? Yes, Grunkin. Grunkin! Oh, sorry, I did not hear my own name. I'm nope, shouting okay. down the stairs, Grunkin! Uh, he is, like, I assume, the, I assume the one guy that tossed me down here and he's, like, doing the one in the foot shuffle right now. He's still there, right? Yes, that's the that's, that's the hobgoblin. Yeah, so he's like he, he has gingerly put his foot down and is like ow ow, but he has pulled his sword on you. So he Grunkin is going to grab his axe and kind of let it because this thing is like you know twice the size of him. So he's gonna he's pulling it along and there's some drool that starts at the edge of his mouth and he looks up and like this cartoon character of a person just gets this hungry look in his eyes and he goes. Prophecy? He's not yeah. here. I can't eat. He's not here. Wait, you? I eat you? I eat you. <laughs> he's gonna, he's gonna charge this guy and swing at him. Okay. Uh, I assume you stand up first. <clears throat> yes. Okay. Then uh, go ahead and give me an attack. And I think you also have two attacks at the level you're at. Uh, yes, I do. So 18 to hit. 18 does just barely hit. Okay. Uh, let's see. First time using this. <clears throat> Apologize. So 1d12 plus 3. Uh, so seven points of damage. Okay. Um, and I'm gonna swing in. Okay, swing again. And... Oh, that's a, a lot more. Jesus. Uh, eight plus six for twenty-four. Oh yeah, that hits. Uh, all right, so one more, one more, three. and I think I'm going to uh, six points of damage. I'm gonna throw a level one smite into this. Ooh. Don't, 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 don't. Oh, don't. don't. Do. Okay, all right. I'm not, I'm not, <laughs> These God has save, spoken. These are door guards. <laughs> don't waste spell slots. <laughs> save it for later, especially because you've had two summon the elder gods. Oh God. <laughs> What? <laughs> Save it for later. All right. <laughs> All right. All right. So you so said you said six damage. A six and seven. Yep. Okay. So uh, with uh, with those two strikes, the first one just buried deep into his neck, and the second one you just finish the strike, and his head gets chopped off. He does a nice little pirouette flip, lands on one of the stairs, and the expression frozen on his face for the rest of the time is. As you had been talking about prophecies and eating him. What? What? Uh, okay. You must taste okay. good. You have prophecy? No? That guy is no super murdered. Uh, okay. Would you like to use the rest of your movement to get back to your to your friends? Uh, yeah, as far as I can. Okay. Uh, we'll say I, you will I get, eat you later. You'll get um, back up kind of like right at the entrance, like to the top of these stairs. Not quite in melee range of any of the other combatants but kind of like in the fray. Uh, okay, uh, Grunkin was last. So that brings us back to uh, Hagios. I'm sorry, how do you say the name? Hagios, Hagios? Uh, Birdie had the, how, 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 did, how did you say it? Cause you said it perfectly. Hagios? Hagios. Hagios, yeah. yeah. Okay, Hagios, it is your turn. What do we have left? Yes. Uh, there's the captain and uh, two more hobgoblin soldiers. Captain is currently uh, in quite the predicament with uh, Nemesis. Oh. No. Like, you really shouldn't have <laughs> messed with us, and I'm definitely going to ram you with my head. You know, like tieflings totally do. Like, for real, bruh. Like, this is like a, those, would you are, are, you, are you doing one of the soldiers or are you doing the captain? Uh, seeing as how Nemesis has the captain at the moment, okay. um, I, I will not 
just in case I have a poor roll, I don't want to accidentally headbutt Nemesis. Uh, you say that to one of the soldiers. It's kind of, once again, they're all very puzzled by your group. And they're just like, wait, wait, wait. Fanifer is a tiefling. She... Go ahead and make your attack roll. He's just kind of like trying to put this all together. Like, I don't know. I know tieflings. I know. I know. They do that. Uh, 18 total. That is exactly what you need. Go ahead and roll yes. damage. Well, as a 1d4 plus 1 bludgeoning. Oh my god. <laughs> 5 total bludgeoning okay. damage. Okay. 5 damage. And we'll say uh, with that perfect max damage roll, you actually also knock him prone. Uh, so you kind of just do the stereotypical uh, cartoon bull and you bring back your hoof a couple times ah, and just run forward uh, tiefling horns first and uh, <laughs> headbutt the shit out of this guy right underneath his chin and he kind of goes sprawling back on his back uh, so he is prone in front of you now so uh, Hagios will stand over him like, are you sorry yet? Because, uh, bruh. Never! For the glory of the fire cult! And he kind of looks around and then looks at the poorly painted fire symbol. He's like, yeah, fire cult! In that case, uh... Oh, what else do I have here? I have an unarmed strike. I might as well use that. Can I can I take that as I'm I'm just punting him? Uh, I mean, if you like, we could say you just have a, a sword and you can just stab down on him with the sword. Oh, okay. Uh, which you'd have advantage on because he's prone. So go ahead and roll an attack roll with advantage. Okay, that first roll was a six. Second roll was a three. So... The six plus four is only ten, so... Unfortunately, no. So you, so you kind of, like, gingerly pull out this sword that you've not really ever used before, and you're just like, are you sorry yet? Eh. And he's kind of, like, frozen in fear, like, sees his life flashing before his eyes, winces, waiting for the pain, and then notices you, like, stabbed his cape, and he's just like, aha! Ah! And he's gonna attempt to get back in the fight. I, like, totally meant to do that. Uh, heck, Pot, it is your turn. Uh, so I want to come up to him. The guy uh, on the ground? Yeah, the guy on the ground. Uh, this is okay. the, is this the captain? No, this is just one of the, the soldiers. Randos, the randos, okay. I'll come over to him still as the water ganasi, um, okay. and just kind of kneel down by him. It's okay. It's okay. This is a very nice tunic you have, but... Have you ever considered how tasty water is? I mean, you just water doesn't have a taste. Okay, okay. But do you know what's mostly water? He just kind of looks at you, sees like the helpless position he's in, he's just like, just kill me, man. No, no. And I'll take out... I don't know, some skin of wine or ale or whatever we carry as adventures to drink at night. Both. Al alcohol. You like you like drinking, right? Strong adventure like you? I'll uncork it. Yeah. Give it a smell. Give it a smell. Bah. Human shit. Tastes like piss. Oh, I mean, yeah, okay, it's not the best, but the Eek, point if you're being, not gonna drink that, toss it over here, man. He's gonna drink it. Don't nemesis. It's okay. <laughs> he's gonna drink it. Here, give it a little sip. Give it a little sip, and I'll put it to his lips, and I'll and I'll pour some into his mouth. He keeps his lips shut. He's like, mmm, mmm, mmm. Mm. I'll, pin it I'll, all over his I'll pinch his nose and just pour it over <laughs> his mouth. I start waterboarding him. <laughs> not oh, okay, waterboarding. Sure. It's not water, but no, yes, but no. No, He's I, like, mm, I would like to. Until so finally, he has to open up his mouth. Okay. And the liquid enter. The liquid enters his mouth. Perfect. Do that what you will, chat. <laughs> can I? Oh, can I make a persuasion 
for him to enjoy the drink and be all like, this fire doesn't have things like this. This fire is just hot and miserable. You like drink lava and shit. Yeah, imagine if you had to drink fire. Uh, you can give me a persuasion check with disadvantage. Uh, as hobgoblins are militant and usually are hired out by the highest bidder, and they're very militant uh, minded, so it's going to take a bit for him to just like drop everything. All right, I'm using my reaction to negate the disadvantage with my restore balance ability. Okay, sure. Nemesis That's rocks. a thing. <laughs> Uh, 13. 13? Mm-hmm. It's kind of just like, I don't have to drink lava here. He just kind of stares at you, still like, <laughs> getting the bad wine taste in his mouth. And he's like, you can see, and you notice at the corner of your eye, he's like fumbling around looking for a sword. I'm going to play into the thing where obviously I didn't make the check and just kind of look at him like kind of long and awkwardly. Just be like you don't? <laughs> you hear the sound of his hand wrapping around the uh, grip of his sword. Huh. I assume that's my action so <laughs> it's whoever's next. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, Snack, it is your turn. Alright, do I still have those two guys sitting on me? Or... Uh, just, I believe it's just uh, it's one that's kind of actively in combat. The other one is tied up with uh, Heek right now, okay, and prone on the ground. The, 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 and yeah. then the captain is engaged with uh, Nemesis. The the one that's still actively on me. I'm just gonna stop him, look at him for a second, and say, "What's this smell like?" Huh? Poison, poison spray him again. <laughs> <laughs> Unsafe. Uh, con save you said. Yeah. yeah. Wow, I am rolling like straight up doo doo tonight. Uh, All right, big eight. Yup, that that's good for me. Strong eight, strong. Uh, so a six, an eight, and a two. So sixteen to this guy. Sixteen damage. Jesus Christ! You just go, hey, what's this smell? And it goes in his face. Like, <coughs> God, that smells. <coughs> he kind of goes to his knees, clutching his throat. And then just falls face forward, uh, dead. And, oh, and I look man. at the, you die. I, <laughs> and I look at the one that Heekpot has, and I say, "See, water wouldn't do that to you." What is your guy? I know you guys are the water cult, but what is your obsession with water? Wait, are we the water cult? <laughs> no. Nah. Well, I but mean, we're like, mostly water. water. Well, water's like <laughs> life and stuff, you know. Uh, it's like anything else on your turn, Snake? Uh, nope, that'll be all. Uh, okay. Uh, that goes to uh, the one hobgoblin that is currently prone next to uh, Heek Pot. Uh, he will have found his longsword stand up using half his movement and attempt to slash you with said longsword. And I'm, I'm uh, taking off the kid gloves. I'm rolling sharpshooter on you, Steve. Much better. Does a 20 hit you? Uh, ooh, yeah, yeah, take 10 slashing damage as the sword rakes up your side. He's just like, your wine tasted like shit. <laughs> Wait, did he do that from prone? No, he stood, no, he stood up. up. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, he only gets one attack. Lame. Uh, I'll just respond back while holding the wound. Like, I know! It's cheap! <laughs> uh, Nemesis, it is your turn. Um, disengage is an action anybody can take, right? Correct. Okay. I'm going to look down at the, at the captain who's tried to hit me twice. Like, buddy, whatever they're paying you, it's not worth what I'm going to do to you if you try and hit me. And then very, very casually, I'm going to disengage by taking a step back and just walking down the stairs. 
just kind of like watches you go and he's just like Ugh. and he turns to the, to the rest of your party uh yeah so you move you start moving uh down the stairs you bump past um uh uh grunkin hey, and, grunkin. Like, and then uh, you see a, a headless uh hobgoblin body um would you like to continue <laughs> down the stairs you like, yeah, you like my handiwork? Right yeah. Okay. Good uh, job, buddy. Then... Prophecy wasn't in that one, but we'll keep trying. <laughs> I'll find it in the next guy. I swear. Uh, so, uh, you go. You're able to make it almost to the base of the stairs. And in the cool. next, I can tell. You, I can actually see, tell you what you see in the next room. In the next room, uh, the uh, the hall and the stairs widen to form a domed chamber supported by four obsidian columns with fiery cracks in them. The air is oppressively warm here. Dope. Is anybody and, around? Uh, you kind of look around real quick. You do see uh, two uh, humanoid um, people in armor uh, on opposite sides uh, of the room. Okay. They seem to holding... kind of like just be leaned up against the wall, just kind of chilling. Still holding the flame in one hand. Uh, I'm going to call out, uh, hey, uh, new recruit. Which way to Vanifern to get my creepy fire robes? All hail the like, burning of the world. I kind of just like look up and then see you. Talk their heads. Not sure what to, not, not sure what to think of you yet. Uh, it is the captain's turn. Uh, the captain, seeing his men slaughtered, uh, is going to try to help the last one uh, and attack, uh, no, attack, uh, heck, because why not? Uh, he's gonna swing his great sword at you twice. One shit, one's pretty good. Six hit you? Nope. How about a 20? Mm hmm. Okay. Uh, the great sword comes slashing down on you. You're gonna take. Uh, two plus, uh, you see actually kind of, uh, has been examining the battle and, uh, using kind of the, uh, maneuvering of the hobgoblin next to him is going to, uh, get a key slice into you. Uh, oh shit. Yeah. Uh, for 18, uh, piercing damage. As he kind of slips it in, almost slides it in between two of your ribs, uh, and you feel uh, a, a coldness, sickliness wash over you. He's just like, "Oh God, that was uh, that did not feel great." You feel a lot of blood leave your body. Uh, my face immediately um, goes ghost pale white. Yes, uh, drunken. It is your turn. Uh, you see only two combatants. Ahead of you. He looks over. Uh, last guy didn't have prophecy. You have prophecy. I was told there's prophecy here, and I will find it. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to take my axe. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show the, the next guy what a prophecy looks like. You're going to go for the one that's uh, kind of... There's both of them are on, on Heek, but one just slid his blade uh, pretty far deep into uh, Heek's body. Yeah, we're going to go towards... The, I'm assuming that's the captain. It is, yeah. So we're gonna go and try and hit the captain. All right, give me a tackle. Uh, uh, plus eight, you say? No, just the one d twenty, please. No, not fourteen d twenty. Thank you. Okay. That's a strong one. <clears throat> Ooh, natural one. That will not get past the uh, the AC of the hobgoblin captain. So your All first right. axe blow, you, it kind of spins a little bit from the dripping blood of the last beheaded hobgoblin in your hand. And actually the flat of the axe kind of slaps against his back um, and just pisses on, pisses him off more than anything else. You see, you see, you see Grunkin do that. And it's like that hammer blow you get when you don't hit the axe quite right. And you just sit there vibrating, just <laughs> oh, <laughs> shit. And right, make his little you, goblin. I believe teeth you have chatter. a second attack, though. Oh, uh, like that's to, much uh, better. Attempt that's, to hit. Uh, Twenty-one. Twenty-one does hit. Go ahead and roll nice. some damage. 
Uh, all right, so 1d12. I actually got this wrong. It's plus six. Uh, so we're looking at 13 damage this time around. Woo! And with the 13, you're able to just the you actually slightly dented his armor when you hit him with the flat of your axe, and then you just kind of hammer blow back into it again, and it actually cracks through the plate metal uh, that had already been weakened between the ice and the poison and your axe just finds into the back of his spine. You see him just kind of spasm forward and then kind of fall limp to the ground. I whisper in his ear, You have prophecy? I will find it. No response. Uh, Hagios, it is your turn. What do I have left? Just the one guy standing next to uh, uh, Heek, and he's not looking too great. He isn't looking too great, or the guy isn't looking too great? Both. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, oh, no. My bro. Heek. You okay, bro? No. Ah, oh, that's, that's not tubular at all. Uh, he's going to knock an arrow in his bow and shoot the the enemy. All right, give me an attack roll. What's that? I rolled an 11. It's plus 9. No, uh, 20. That Total. does hit. Go ahead and roll some damage. Mm. Nine piercing. Nine plus phaser you taking before. Uh, yep. Yeah. And with that, your the your uh, 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 your bolt actually just slams all the way through his breastplate, right into his heart, and he kind of just kind uh, of falls down dead. And with that, yeah, you, defeated, like... you defeated the entrance guards. Da, 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 da. Yay! It only took us 12, 37, 15, 12 minutes? Oh my. Uh, okay. Uh, you all are gathered, you've gathered your wits together. Meanwhile, Nemesis, you're at the bottom of the stairs and these two figures start approaching you. Uh, they are... Uh, covered in this kind of uh, rocky uh, armor that takes the shape of uh, what looks to be kind of like a um, like a chainmail, but it looks like it's made out of rocks and uh, like on key connecting pieces, like on the elbow, in the chest, on the waist, like where a belt buckle would be, uh, the wrists and the shoulders. There's these little spheres of flame there. I'm assuming y'all are like the royal guard. That's kind of looking at you, they're like, We are exalted members of the fire cult. Child, I, come. Humble, humble apologies. I'm still just like playing with the, the control flame between my hands. And they, they, they see you doing that, it's like, Ah, you clearly are a child of flame as well. Oh, I was born in the flame and molded by it. I have seen beyond the end of time and the fires that will raise the world, my friends. I'm gifted with the sight, and I have a prophecy to share with Vanifor. There's like very eagerly nodding their head, just like, oh, oh, yeah, oh, uh, well. And if that's giant, that's really case, good at lying. If that's the case, um, well, uh, we can tell you uh, that um, you don't want to keep going forward. Um, yeah. That's yeah. that's like that, that that's that's like a trap, you know. If people oh, of course. Somehow, you, if people somehow have... get past our our, our 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 front guard, you know, they they, they go forward, and that's where they die. But I mean, I'm, I'm sure the trap would not harm you, child of light, child of fire, holy fl a flame one. Brazen yeah. no, with most the def, fires of the nine hells, Fegalos themselves would be honored to consider you one of its worshippers. Uh, Can we all it. hear this? Uh, no, Just... not quite. As you are all at the top of the stairs, still, and it is—it's uh, it's a decently long set of stairs. 
Uh -huh. um, so you would not be able to hear this particular interaction. So as we're talking, I kind of, I, I kind of shoulder sideways toward one of the other doors, like I'm looking in that direction, and I'm just like, yeah, right. So I don't want to go forward because that's a fire trap. We all know that. Which you, way was you it all... to the again? All of you at the top of the stairs can give me a perception check. <laughs> this is fitting. I have a zero. <laughs> all right, all right. Let's see how this goes. That's. Oh yeah, I got an eleven. Drunken, Grunken, Grunken, you hear? Go forward, not trapped. For the prophecy! <laughs> 17. Fuck sake. 17. Uh, hey, Geos, you hear, don't go forward. Whoa, Trapped. whoa, whoa, little buddy. Like, oh, hold up, bro. Like, he's leading he this did. group. He is full on the can leader. 14. He is <laughs> in front. Can, can 14. He is like, you, you, you kind of hear it both ways. You're not sure who's right. You, you kind of you could be like, well, I'm not sure if I heard the nod or not. Yeah, Goblin yeah. surfer dude. So I've got uh, four more recruits that came mm. with me. Wow. Uh, Child of light, you have brought four. No one has ever brought four at the same time. Are are they worthy? Will they survive the trial by fire? Oh, uh, the fire will cleanse them of their unworthiness as it cleanses oh. all things, my dude. Oh, perfect. You truly are very wise. Yeah, but seriously, which way is Vanifor? Important prophecy. Gotta tell her right away. There's only there's only one other way out of this place. It's kind of looking like mm, that way. <laughs> no other turns in the road that I should know of. Just straight path. Just make sure I turn right. Follow the door. Oh well, we're not, we are not worthy to to travel beyond these sacred pillars. Uh, so uh, I, honestly, we've never seen the inside of the actual temple, but we hear it's magnificent. Okay, okay. Hey, thank you so much. I think you guys are doing a great job. Like, keep the sanctum safe. Let my buddies through. Uh, I will be back with the words of the sacred fire to initiate you, and I'll put in um, a good word with Vanifor. Oh, that would be that'd be most most pleasant for you to do that. Uh, what did you say your friends looked like? Uh, ugly, all of them. <laughs> you see this goblin start sprinting down the ah, you And I reach kidding. down and I pick him up by the head again. <laughs> hey, 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 ah, got this is the first that, one. Uh, the this, hair. Is, this is my honor guard, Grunkin, and he's going to oh. come with me to go try the trial by oh. fire. Oh, we're going, we're going this way. Huh? Yeah, that oh. one. That well, way. the trial <laughs> does require a sacrifice. He will be a worthy one. Sorry? See, you guys get it. You're clever. Sacrifice. Look, with What's upper level thinking like that, you are going to rise to levels through this marketing scheme in no time. I mean, cult. I mean, organization. So, so, gr they, Grunkin. they sacrifice? No, they no, sacrifice. Grunkin, Grunkin, Grunkin. Grunkin. Uh, what? My, my, my little dude. Uh, are the rest of you falling down the stairs as well? Yeah, I'll shut. start going down after Grunkin has uh, screamed at the bottom again. Okay, okay I, will be, I will be quiet. Uh, as the rest of you come down... They kind of like nudge each other. Like, wow, so, they really are ugly. Um, <laughs> so, That's very real. <laughs> it's I would just like, very true, my man. I would like. Grunk, to, Grunkin likes the way his hair looks. As I walk in holding my wounds, <laughs> the cultist are met with a triton. They look at you to like. And then they look back at uh, Nemesis. They're like, you got a son of the water to convert. You damn right I did. I, I told you I would be bringing hella sacrifice. Did someone say they, just get, they get down? They just get down the knees like we are not worthy. That's not correct. Worthy. Okay, everybody, everybody, and the I moment, just start shoving people toward the door. The moment they go on their knees, I make a bonfire in front of them. <gasps> Another wielder of the sacred fire of Thegalos. <gasps> oh my goodness. Oh. I'm which like one of, uh, which one of these uglies shall be your sacrifice? Would you like to be my sacrifice? We are not worthy. Not Ooh, worthy. Okay, I, fine. I, Both I of said you. Sacrifice. Sacrifice. Both of you can be our sacrifice then. 
Not worthy. Not yeah, no, they're worthy. not allowed inside. Oh. We cannot oh. enter past the sacred pillars. And you look at these pillars, they're just like obsidian pillars that look like they've been like wasted away with age. You can very clearly tell they are not sacred in any way, shape, or form. Does the sacrifice have to be alive when we get there? Dude, don't sweat it. We got hella sacrifice. Oh, okay. Well, uh, otherwise, it would not be a sacrifice. Let's just get moving. Let's scoot. Come on. Come on. Gift? Uh, I'm gonna, Gift. I'm gonna drop Grunken, and I'm gonna, like, half punt him towards the door. <laughs> you get one of those, like, friendly, like, get up, come on, get, get, kind of kicks from I Nemesis. Hit, I, assume, I assume that's, like, not the first time Nemesis has done this, and therefore knows that my ass is ironclad. Yep. <laughs> I go for more of a scoop yeah. motion. Right. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. <laughs> no putty. I, I, I did not appreciate that last, like, 10, like, 15, 20 yards? Buddy, I warned you, I would anymore. step on you. That is a threat. That's what, for you. We don't, for you we don't do that anymore, either. That, what? Okay, Susan says, not worthy, not worthy. I still say we should keep <sighs> sacrifices, whatever. So you travel down the hallway. Uh, that is the way that is not trapped. <clears throat> uh, it's quite a long hallway uh, that you travel for around... 90 feet or so that comes to uh, a cross and, and you listen at the cross to see which way you should go uh, to your left you can actually look down and you see what are very clearly like jail cells uh, to your right you see more stairs and you hear the sounds of like um, like a kitchen or people having a meal uh, and straight ahead you see uh, what is very clearly, uh, and you, there's quite a lot of heat and light coming from straight ahead, uh, and you hear the sounds uh, of hammers on anvils and things like that. Uh, this is clearly the uh, foundry that has been restarted. All right, this is just a thought. But what if we all got dinner and, like, cleaned up those wounds and chilled out for a minute? And maybe, like, we snuck into the ceremony with the little fires all painted on us or whatever. Sure, I could make us some... I look at all the armor that they had been wearing. Something better than that. Yeah, yeah. So, like, let's go make some small talk. See what the clergy wears. Uh, and we'll just go see what the ceremony's all about, you know? I could use a little light entertainment. I'd like to propose oh, uh, that since So they I'm... have prophecy. Not yet. Since I'm totally a tiefling, I don't really need to wear, like, logos and stuff. I could totally get by on my own... You know, what, what's that word of, uh, you know, like, radness? You know? Right, but don't... I do have a question for you, though. Don't you want to be on fire? Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, you like, would be. You would be repping your hometown of the Nine Hills, like quite severely, my dude. Bodacious. I gotta say, like fire tones definitely suit your hellish complexion. Hmm. That's like really cool that you uh, that you acknowledge and validate my fiery metal. Hush, Grunkin. What? Well, you're warmer than you are cold. Hmm. All right, so you decide to go towards the sounds warmer of than eating. I am cold. Yeah. That's very deep. Thank okay. you, Snake. Uh, you travel down some stairs. To you. you travel down some more stairs, Earth kind cold. of uh, turning uh, 80 degree, 180 degrees. Uh, and as you turn once more, uh, you uh, open up the area and you just see a whole bunch of hobgoblins at a mess and kind of like this makeshift mess hall a bunch of uh sleeping bags blankets a large bonfire meat cooking and there's a moment where they're all looking at you one person's fork clatters to the table and then one of them just kind of stands up just like who the hell are you 
And that's where we'll pause. We'll take a quick break. Oh. We'll take a 10 minute <laughs> break. It is 11.40 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We'll see you back here at 11.50 Eastern Standard Time. Don't go nowhere. Don't change the dial because we'll be right back. Revealer.
And welcome back to our magnificent one shot of the mercenary group our heroes of Elysian have countered on their adventures to find the floating isle in the uh, shimmering sea. Or, I'm sorry, the blossoming sea. Uh, they're currently in the middle of the Temple of Flames looking for Vanifer, the person they were hired to go murder. Uh, or we left them off. They uh, had found and stumbled upon the mess hall for the entire rest of the Hobgoblin army that apparently Vanifer had hired to help her guard her temple. There's the awkward moment where everyone has stared at each other and you have been tasked with the question of, who the hell are you guys? For the prophecy! Still, uh, still, still holding flames in both hands. Why? We are the chosen seers of flame. The great searing fires of the nine realms and Phlegathon sent us. Uh, but we were kind of hungry after the long trip. So the vanguards told us to stop by and have you feed us and get us, you know, our fucking robes and whatever. We're here to see Vanifer. We're taking a break first. You got a problem with it, little man? Give me a precision check. Heck, heck pot. There's food here? Heck, pot. Food? Oh, there's a lot of food here. Oh, there's fuck a, yeah. There's, there's many cooking fires with spits of meat turning on them. All right. Any chance that I can use the inspirations you've given me from our regular sessions? Sure. Yeah. If you want to blow them on a one shot, who am I to say no? I'll blow them on a fucking one shot. All right. I'm going to do this with DM <laughs> inspiration uh, okay. for that tasty 1d6. That's a total of... Come on. D6 is plus three. Uh, 25. 25. Dead silence after you finish your spiel. The one that had stood up and accused all of you. Sit oh, well, I, I the... walk over to grab food. Kind of watch you just going. like, yeah, help yourself. I mean, we got plenty of whatever. Uh, we don't handle clothing of new... They told us not to use the word cultist. We don't handle clothing of the new hires. Um, that's on you. This is kind of the, the hobgoblin area. And then you want to go further towards the temple. That would be kind of the, the not the new, the higher, the employee area. Right. Thank you, Senior thank staff. you for showing us around. Would you mind if we socialize a bit? Vanifer was telling me that we want to make a better relationship, you know, to to the mercenary corps and the people in the back. I figure a little that socializing couldn't hurt. Doesn't sound like her. Usually, she's just engulfing people in flames and using the <laughs> ashes and other spells. But sure, that's a welcome change of pace. Sit down, you know, eat. We have plenty of food. We've lost about half a regiment to, you know, the whole turning into ash thing. Yeah, we're going to talk about random immolations. I'll bring it up at the next staff meeting. Y okay, you know, if you end up the next pile of ash, don't blame us. But, like, how can you end up a pile Ooh, of you ash have a when cat. you're a super cool tea? Pretty kitty. I'm going to sit down and eat a bunch of food and take a short rest. I'm, I'm yeah, gonna you guys can absolutely take a short rest here. <laughs> While doing that, I'm also going to pull out a random jar and just start pouring it on other people's food and out pops a viscous white fluid onto everyone's stuff. They all get mayonnaise. You made mayonnaise. You do it to the, you do it to the first person, they're just like, uh... They kind of look at you to like see, like make sure you eat it, and then I go to the next person. Do you, well? Do you take? Do you like? Do you eat it? No. Okay. As you go to the second person, he just kind of like takes his plate. He's like, "No, nah, we're gonna poison here." It's, it's not poison. It's mayonnaise. Snake mix is the best. Snake snake makes the best mayo. You know, on this side of the waves. What the fuck is mayonnaise? <laughs> Good tasty treat. You try, I, you try I, now. I pour it out in front of him. That. Taste it. 
No. It's rotten eggs whipped together. Nah, it's not oh. rotten eggs, bro. And they just take a big spoonful and eat it. Why didn't you say so? <laughs> because like, we said like... so. <laughs> okay, so like it's more like if you cold process a hollandaise sauce, which is like super uh it's super bad process where you like cook the the eggs over the stove like super AGS. slow and their eyes you know, start to like, glaze whoa. over just like AGS. snake snake help. what's up help grunkin snake and he's, he's got what is wrong point. with you now he, he's got this he's got this spit at least twice as large as him oh my and he's god he's like he's he's again it's got like tire. a full lamp shank on it yeah he's got a full lamp and he's trying to get it on the table help help grunkin I poor man is on I'm not tall it. enough. <laughs> Fine, that helps. And he's gonna like, he's gonna like, kind of like bench press it up and start like eating it right off the spit right there and sit on the floor. This is a little form. dude. Don't choke. This is better than prophecy. <laughs> the hobgoblins there just kind of look at him and they look at you guys just like, he is better behaved than our goblin soldiers. I trained him well. Well, this was kind of like. Yes, I was. Watch this. Not it's so prophecy much. and point at the food. Like, <laughs> not so much a soldier, more as like the mascot of our gnarly crew. And garbage disposal. And garbage disposal. You mean cannon fodder? That's the idea. What I said. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, so you can all take a short rest if you'd like. So you roll any hit dice, get back any spells or abilities, anything like that, you get on a short rest. Grunk and not sacrifice. You sacrifice. And then once you've all kind of eaten your fill, they're just like, uh, so yeah, just go. And they kind of look at all you to like, actually, you know, if Vanifar really is waiting for you. I don't want you to guys be late, and then she blames us because you tell them that you, you took a snack. With us. Listen, all right, we'll let you go through our barracks. It takes you straight to the temple. All right, just and he kind of like looks down the table and he's like, "Hinker punk," and he kind of like, "Uh, y y y yes, sir." Show the uh, the new hires. Where to go? He's like, uh, yes, sir. <clears throat> he gets up and he's just like, um, right this way. Uh, new. He looks at the captain. He's like, hires, cultists, hires, hires. New hires, this way. Hey, man, you run a tight ship here, and I respect that. I'll make sure that word of this reaches Vanifer. Oh, wait, fire cults have ships? Yeah. Kind of thinks about it, and he's just like, maybe don't. Maybe we just, you never met us. How about that? that hey, whatever you want, Chief. Yeah, no, we don't want to, no risks. Yeah, no, we're good. Uh, and the uh, and, uh, private Hinker Punk starts to lead you through uh, the kind of hobgoblin area. He takes you through a door uh, where there are um, uh, several uh, ogres, like in full battle armor. Nope. Um, takes you through uh um, more like hobgoblin barracks areas where there's beds. Uh, it takes you through like the armory of the of the of the of the hobgoblin army uh, army. You see just like a bunch of like spears and pole arms and shields and suits of armor kind of stacked up against the walls. They got ogres. They got goblins. Do they have any like attack wargs or wolves or anything nasty like that? Uh, you don't pass by any kennels or any or any like pens where they'd have animals. Um, no all because anything you open up or you walk by, it's either um, more just there's a bunch of hot like you start like kind of mentally doing the math. There's like over fifty hobgoblins here, um, mm -hmm. and then the uh, kind of battle ogres they have, um, but no no beasts of uh, of war it seems like. Okay. 
Uh, until you get uh, to, you move through one last set of barracks, and the one of the walls kind of like blasted open, and there's a strip, a uh, thin strip of land uh, that he kind of points to, and there's a giant chasm. And you kind of get to the edge of the land, and you look down. Uh, there's a big pit of lava down there, probably about a hundred feet down on in this sheer cliff chasm. He's like, "Yeah, so you'll just want to walk across that thin little land bridge right there. Uh, keep going straight, take a left, uh, and um, you'll, uh, you'll run into the fire temple." Okay, you guys have a good time crossing the uh, treacherous. I mean, not treacherous bridge. And he turns back around and starts walking away. Thanks, Chief. Never met you, Hinker Bunkle. You're very helpful. Hinker Bunkle was such a nice person. I think it was just Hinker Punk. <clears throat> Does it matter? Yes. What? He was punk? Uh, but yes, you are faced with like a five foot wide, uh, generously at some parts, narrower others, uh, land bridge across a sheer cliff chasm 100 feet down that ends in a boiling lake of lava. Dope. Place kind of rocks. So, like, so Grunk can go first. Have fun, uh, Grunk. Grunk. This, the the bridge is very spacious for you. There's plenty. Like, you're not you're not you don't have to like your feet are you know you walk in the middle of the bridge. You're not anywhere near the, either the sides of the bridge. It's a you know, it's a comfortable walk. Start walking across. You look over to your left uh, and you can see that um, forge and foundry uh, um, to your left. Uh, and you can see that the lava that is below you that's forming this giant lake of lava is running down off the side of where that forge is, um, kind of like a, in, a, in a lava waterfall style. It seems that lava is powering uh, the forge. And you can hear the sounds of uh, blacksmithing and forging and things like that. Um, you see, you can clearly make out what is uh, a fire giant uh, and possibly looks like an Afriki, maybe. Uh, then they seem to have several... Uh, minions and uh, peons that they are ordering around uh, making arms and armor. Uh, the rest of you, this will be an uncomfortable walk across this bridge as you are all uh, medium or larger creatures. Uh, so uh, I will need you to make uh, up to you what kind of check here. You can do an acrobatics. You can do a um, I will say you can give me a perception check to kind of figure out the best places where to walk on this very narrow bridge. Um, or you're gonna, if you're not comfortable with either of those checks, you're gonna need to convince me of some other check you want to make, or use uh, an ability or magic or something else. Can I use okay. athletics? I will allow athletics. You can like jump from one part of the bridge to another that is wide enough to support Nemesis' large size. Dope. I'm going to, like, hang 10 with my athletics. Athletics? Dope. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. I accidentally rolled 6d20, which gave me a 64. 64? Uh, that was Holy a very shit. good roll. <laughs> you start from one end of the bridge, and you just jump to the other side. I got a 25 total. 25, yeah. You are 100% fine. You're kind of, like, playing it like a uh, leapfrog almost. You're just like, huh? <laughs> and perfectly land at each like space that's wide enough for you um the so bridge like, does span for this, this is a land bridge is it thinner at the middle does it look kind of kind of shaky at all at any point uh you landing with your massive uh you know bulk will not cause this bridge to lose any uh uh sustainability especially with your higher roll okay. uh, but it is it is like a hundred foot long bridge mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, so uh, Grunkin and Nemesis are able to make it to the other side without without harm. And they twenty-two are now total. Waiting for all of you. Uh, uh, Not a net twenty. Sure. Uh, Hagios as well. All three of you are on the other side. No worries. No problems. Hagios, so, high five. Totally. I high five you a little too hard towards the lava edge. On purpose. It's like one of those like. Uh, uh, and then I reach up and I grab you by the horn and I pull you back. Oh, I, I love that. I was actually going to say, when you push him back, he's going to overcompensate and fall flat on his face. <laughs> uh, he can snack. Okay, so uh, Snack is going to reach into his bag and he's going to pull out rope and he's 
gonna look at the rope. Pick up the rope and just start feeding it forward across the bridge. And he's going to use uh, infusion to uh, push, to turn it into a rope of climbing. Okay. And just make it go across the bridge so that the entire time as uh, he's walking across, he can just be holding on to it as he goes, move it forward, help keep his balance. Okay. I'll allow it. All right. Heek, what you doing? Uh, I'm looking at the ease in which Grunken um, crossed the land bridge. I just go, hmm. And for the first time, I'm going to actually use the ability of shape shifting. Uh, to take the action and shift down into a goblin, since I can see him directly, and sure. walk across um, the same way that he did, hopefully. Yeah, the uh, water canossi that had been traveling with you shrinks down to uh, a small little goblin size. Uh, and uh, it definitely your perception of this land bridge is like, oh, wow, this is very roomy. Very, I could... I could dance across this if I really wanted to. Oh no, uh, where did Heek Pot go? Uh, and you uh, walk across the other side. Uh, there are now two goblins in your party. You now know exactly what's going to happen. The minute you get within my reach, I'm picking you up by the skull. <clears throat> Heek, my little guy! You look so much better like this. I am glad I am bigger than them. <laughs> Uh, as you are holding me by the head, I will start to lose the features of the, my face and go pale white and grow back out to around six feet tall. And then I set you down. All right, fine. Mm. Oh, man, I thought <laughs> we had two mascots. No, he looked much better the other way. Go back to the other way. Why Sorry, you like Aegeus. Still just your job. <laughs> Wait, I thought Grunkin was the the mascot. You think a lot of things that aren't right, my little dude. I think. <laughs> Not much. On occasion. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm confused. Okay. Yes, uh, you are. I thought, Dekvot, why are you why are you not why are you not my size? You look much better that way. I'm not sure what you mean by look. It was better. it was a vast improvement. No. Look. Just between you and me, and you, and you, and you, and me. Mm hmm. I think after we kill everyone, we should keep this place. Like the lava falls, the creepy bridge. There's an armory. It's cozily we... warm. Yeah, it maybe we'll come nice back to it in a couple here. years. But this place fucking rules. Hey, I used oh, to live in a volcano. Right. Fire actually kind of kicks ass. You drink lava all the time. You drink like, lava. Like, this is hmm? totally the perfect place for home. Feels Ex exactly like home. Exactly Grunk as I were. Feels Grunk like tried... home. Grunkin tried touching lava once. It didn't go well. Oh, anybody can touch lava once. Y yes. W one time, Grunkin only. Only one time. It burnt his finger, like it burnt his finger right off, you see? And he's actually holding up like a nub of a finger. <laughs> see, that's the trick. You can also drink lava once. <laughs> yeah, Grunk could not do that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, really I'd hurt. like to see someone do that. Uh, you reach, you move just kind of about 20 feet past the land bridge and back into uh, defined uh, hallways again. Do they, uh, and you, Patty? Go ahead. Yes. Do they seem like they have any sort of alarm system outside of? Uh, okay then. Good to know. Outside of yelling at each other. Yeah. No. It, no, it doesn't seem like it. I'm gonna say, all right. In case anything goes really bad, remember the way back to this bridge. Uh, Snick, can you leave us like a chalk trail or something, just in case? Or. Yeah. And I, I will just. Why not mayonnaise? I can think of like 20 reasons, not the least of which it's hard enough. I and gave hot that enough. to them to poison them. Wait, really? It's rotten eggs. Who would actually eat that? I'm goblins. I, I, I very carefully 
I flick the rest of the mayonnaise off of my hand from where I was eating it from the jar. <laughs> uh, you are, so yeah, so you move past the uh, land bridge and you're at a T junction. Uh, you look to your right, uh, there appears to be what looks like a uh, small pool of water that dead ends into the room. Uh, look to your left, it's a long hallway and you can hear other things. And you look straight ahead um, and following uh, Hinker Punk's uh, directions, you would need to continue straight ahead um, into that room. You see um, a large chamber it's kind of shaped into an elongated hexagon uh, oh. that uh, has uh, several um, doors on, on, on either side of the room. Uh, and there are many uh, ancient forges and anvils uh, in the room that are obviously not in service, not working. They got a lot, like a lot of cobwebs on them, uh, things like that. Uh, there's like a bunch of um, like pallets kind of stacked on top of each other, uh, with just like random crap on there, like you hmm. know, like uh, uh, barrels and um, crates that have just like you know random like planks of wood and like a hammer, like just a bunch of like random stuff you would see kind of like stacked in with these non. Uh, functional anvils and forges. You know? <clears throat> Tibbs on this place. This is going to be my bedroom. Uh, as you walk forward past the T-junction, uh, close to this room, uh, you see that there uh, are a bunch of cultists here. And they all have kind of uh, taken, it looks like they've taken uh, like bits and scraps of the crap that's in this room and kind of assembled it together uh, into this makeshift. If you squint in your eyes and cock your head, uh, it kind of looks like a flame made out of garbage. Uh, and they're all kind of like kneeling in front of it, just like, oh, mighty fire, oh, mighty flame. All right. This smells like shit. Is is there a, is there a, a a doorway between us and them or no? It is it is an open kind of uh, it's an open archway that you're walking that you're walking towards that leads you into this room. All right, as so we there... walk in, uh, I'm gonna use thaumaturgy to cause a flame to burst up from the bottom of their statue and engulf it, and cast the light back upon myself immediately the uh, flame takes actual shape and catches fire. And they're all just like, oh, all prayers have been answered. What up, cult sluts? Your prayers are awful. They look at the scene. <laughs> the, the rat, your ragtag group walking on from across the lava land bridge, just like, and who are you? We've We've received a sign. You've come at the perfect opportunity. Come, rejoice with us, as the Lord of Light has given us salvation and a sign. You mean oh, us? Fledgathon sent us, baby. I am here with a vision for Vanifer. I walked from the flames themselves. Do you mean Phlegathos? Huh? That's what I said. Oh, we must have misheard you. Yes, these are the flames of Phleg Phleglos, clearly. Phleglos? Come on, buddy. Hey, if you want to keep your membership, you have to, like, clean up your act a little bit. <laughs> Look, point me towards Vanifer, and my word will never reach your ears that you just fucked up God's name twice. <laughs> the Grunkin is going to pull the this like, out. What? What? You're like... Uh, uh, Phlegathos is not the name of our god. Phlegathos, Phleg Phlegathos. Now you got me saying it wrong. Phlegathos is the layer of the nine hells that the hottest fire comes from. Buddy, sure. obviously I know that. Fire is divinity. My home. Yeah, yeah, he came from there. They look at you like, <gasps> are you, are you here to lead us like Vanifer? Another, and then they look at take another look. Like, wait, you're not. I'm a tiefling. Born. No. Yeah. Give me a persuasion check with disadvantage. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna use my ability to negate the disadvantage. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> Clockwork 
Uh, sorcerers go. Oh my god. Uh, so let's see. That is a 20 total because I rolled a 16. There's like a between the fire coming from their uh, statue and the uh, just general zealotry that is now filling them uh, because they have been given a sign. They're like, oh, I have read about one of the sons of Glicia was covered in fur, just like you are a true son of Glicia. <gasps> Praise be to the fires. Oh, they all start bowing. Oh. Oh, for oh the gosh. prophecy! Vanifer must be alerted at once. Oh, and they all kind of like get up and they start walking um, to a door uh, that's on your left that has uh, a very nicely and intricately designed, not the crappily drawn flame or the makeshift garbage fire statue they've been worshiping. Uh, very like nicely, uh, like chiseled in. Uh, what looks to be like a cauldron that has fire coming out of it on the door. Dope. And they all, they all go over to the door and they kind of look at each other like, as like a, okay, who's going to knock. And then they I look got at the rest it. Of- I got it. Don't even sweat it guys. They're in awe of the fact that someone will disturb Vanifer's chamber, but they're just like, Oh, of course. And they all kind of back away. Hey, you guys might want to just leave. She does tend to emulate. I'm told. But uh, an, 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 another another worthy prophet of fire. We want to be here as the two prophets converse in the holy speech. There will be an, an announcement made to the cult um, at large following our conversation. But the first words are for myself and my emissaries to deliver to Vanifer alone. Thus saith oh. the voice of hell. Oh, I, I take uh, one. Of course. I take one aside and very loudly, quietly tell him, you do know that when they converse, everything around them burns. We would be so lucky to catch fire yeah. from the holy words from their lips. But we understand that the first words are for the prophets to tell one another solely. We will be given the holy word when it is appropriate. And they kind of keeping their heads bowed all back up away from you guys. All right. Goddamn. I'm going to, I actually, I just, I'm going to lean over and I'm going to give Snack a little bump on the bump on the shoulder. Like, that was pretty good, man. You catch on quick. I like <clears throat> all right. <clears throat> uh, let's see. What was the line? I, I look at the inside of my palm where I have something very hastily scrawled there that you can hardly even read very smudged with sweat. Uh, Vanifer, holiest of unholies, I bring word from the, the ash, whatever. Hey, lady, lady, uh, I got a prophecy for you. You say that to the door? And I knock. Boom, boom, boom. Thump, thump, thump. Hello, prophecy, prophecy for Vanifer. Saw it in the flames, ash and smoke and whatever. Lady, I've been huffing volcanic fumes for 26 years. Open up. No response. Fucking hell. I just kicked the door open. Bam! Give me an athletics check. I will so, Patty, give you an athletics check. <laughs> I am the sorcerer with athletics. Total of 20. Total of 20. Damn. Absolutely. Bam! Door gets just blown off its hinges. Uh, and actually starts sliding down the stairs that are right behind that door. And you're like, I shout down the stairs, Hey, Vanifer! Which is drowned out by the... Agios will jump on top of it and surf down the stairs. Yes, my dude! Acrobatics check. And for the coolness factor, you can have advantage. Oh, that's so fucking dope. I gotta, I gotta add, I gotta add, it was, uh, 21 total. You surf that door like your Legolas surfing his shield at Helm's Deep. <laughs> Going down the stairs, and when you reach the bottom, you see... Hang up! <laughs> you see a very large fire temple room. This room has a wide alcove and the opposite wall. A raised dais with an altar fills that alcove. 
flanking are two smoking braziers. Braziers? No, brazers. Sorry. Are two smoking brazers. Braziers. <laughs> Brazier. Two smoking, smoking brassiers, brassiers. My boy. brazers, <laughs> and two flickering torches and sconces. What a hell of a thing to come back to! All right. <laughs> Rich we tapestries probably, uh... decorate the walls. Uh, all the tapestries depict scenes uh, of either uh, devils coming out of the nine hells to wreak havoc on the material plane, or what looks to be depictions of the city of brass that lies within the heart of the plane of fire and their denizens coming to the material plane of earth and just scorching the world on fire and the largest tapestry of all shows a giant column tornado of flame with a face in it and you know this to be the elemental lord of the fire plane oh aside to Heek, I'm going to be like, we should probably catch up with Aegis before he fucks this up. You Turning around as you reach the end of the stairs, uh, Aegis, uh, from where they were kneeling in front of the altar, is a tiefling, which confuses you as they are way different than how you look, with their bright red skin and their more, uh, less uh, ram style horn that you have and more true devil horn style. Uh, they have long black hair uh, on either side and then in, in the middle uh, is a ponytail. Uh, they wear kind of this scaled uh, armor with uh, several clasps and buttons made of gold that all bear the same symbol that has that's the cauldron with the fire coming out of it. And on their hip is this rather large cross between a short sword and a dagger uh, that is that curves wickedly uh, and has symbols of fire and smoke rising along the racked uh, hilt of it. She turns and looks at you, making the commotion you have entering into her temple. shame that you came down here as you did because it is the perfect timing to offer another sacrifice to the fire lord you'll do whoa whoa whoa, whoa whoa what are you the dagger. doing down here she just looks Fuck. at you just like ah poor poor unfortunate soul and she just points her finger at you and a small bead that oh, no. glistens red like a ruby flies at you. The bead is only an inch long, but glows impossibly bright. Hit the dirt! And as it, land, and as it lands right in front of you, it slowly starts to blossom, <coughs> growing and growing in diameter, sucking the air out of the room as a fireball goes off in front of you. Give me a dexterity saving throw, please. <laughs> there it is. Oh, God. Oh, goodness. I, uh... Hmm. I assume the rest of you are making your way down the stairs? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 22. Yeah. 22. That Thank you, it was not sacrifice. We'll save. So hey, Geos. Take... Hey, 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 Geos. Hey, Geos. Stomp, your little, stomp your little goat foot on the door and bring it up between you and the fireball. Can I do that? God, can uh... I do that? I mean, we'll say that's how you, we'll flavor text that as to how you take half damage from this fireball. Boy, I love a fistful of d6s. <laughs> I love dice. Ah, werewolf. Brings him back. Uh, so you'll take half of 30 fire damage, which will be 15. So will take 15 fire damage. Ah. <laughs> As you see it starting to blossom, and you're like, oh, that can't be good. So you kick the door, and it is about halfway up as the fire just whoosh rushes over you, and it still singes parts of your fur, and it's still, uh, you feel the heat just kind of pulling at your skin. You can feel all of the little hairs on your face start to like pop and crisp. And then as, me as soon as it started, it's over as the fireball dissipates. That's and then the rest of you, as you're coming down the stairs, you hear the roar of the fireball go off, and turn the corner just in time to see uh, Hagio standing there, 
with a lot less hair on their body, kind of looking <laughs> at you guys, one of their horns giving off a little bit of smoke. As uh like yeah. as we're walking mm. down the stairs, can I cast some spells in preparation? Sure. Not cool, bro. I just want to cast wolf. protection from energy on myself and on my homie Heek. Okay. Uh as you uh come around the corner, Vanifer sees the rest of you and she's like, Ah, perfect. Enough of you that there will be witness to the greatness that is about to happen. She raises both of her hands up. The fire in the braziers that is there in the alcoves flares up immensely, and two fire elementals are summoned. Um, <sighs> the ceremony has begun. Yes, you can. You're about to say something? I was going to say, while she's doing a summoning spell, can I do something? It's not so much a summoning spell as she literally just like raises her hand. The elementals pop out. It seems like the, the fire that were there were actually elementals. Okay. Then as they form and are there, can I still just be like... Just silently take out my wand, point it, and activate it? Absolutely. And that'll be the last thing before you guys roll initiative. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and uh, I was going to say, as we get to the fireball, I'm... We see that fireball. I'm going to do the same sort of thing as we go down. I'm going to look at the flames and say, oh, yes. Touch my armor and infuse it with elemental protection from fire. Yeah, yeah you can see you can do that while you're walking down the stairs. Good like call on that one. But, uh, yeah. This <laughs> one, uh, but, yeah. Oh, that did not come up. Interesting. What'd you roll? I am looking for the roll now. Give me one second. Oh, it's a D100. I can actually, I have it pulled up. If you want to roll it, I'll tell you what it is. I rolled a 63. 63. Not nice. <laughs> Close, but not quite. Uh, okay. Uh, 63 is an object of the GM's choice disappears into the ethereal plane. The object must be neither worn nor carried within 120 feet of the target and no larger than 10 feet in any dimension. Uh, I choose... One of the braziers? No. Because <laughs> there are no braziers. <laughs> hey. Uh, I choose... I assume the target was Vanifer? Yeah, officially the target would have been her. 120 feet of her? Uh... Because it doesn't really matter. I, I choose the altar. The altar just disappears. She kind of like, and she sees you holding out this wand of wonder. And she sees the altar disappear, and she's like, "You missed." Everyone can roll initiative now. I got a thirteen. Okay. I got a nine. Okay. Eighteen. Uh. Okay. Uh, 12. Okay. Uh, Grunkin? Five. Ooh. Some hot rolls there, guys. Yeah, pretty dope. Okay, Vanifer got that. Ooh, nice. Good job, Vanifer. I hope I can run good, good job, Vanifer. You've done so well. Earth's gonna set on fire. Uh, the elementals got that. Still, I wait. Okay. Um, so, uh, going first will be. Uh, hey, Geos. So you can go ahead and decide what you like to do. I'm going to do my range steady. Okay. You shooting uh, Vanifer or one of the elementals? Vanifer. Okay. All right. That is a 23. Uh, 23 does hit. 
And that, mm, the second one will not hit. It's going to be 14. Okay. Alrighty. And that damage is... 13. 13 damage to Vanifer. Okay. The uh, arrow just kind of pokes into the uh, side of her armor a little bit. Just kind of... And the arrow immediately goes up in flame. Uh, okay, that was your action. Anything like do with bonus action or movement? Uh, I'd like to find shelter from the fire. Uh, if I could, is the door propped up for good now, or like? No, that was kind of like a temporary thing. Okay. It doesn't have enough. There's nothing. There's not enough base to it where it could um, stand up like straight. It would be constantly falling down. So you kind of propped it up momentarily to do it, and then it fell back down because the base is not square. Okay. Uh, is there like a this this rocks? temple area? Just to kind of to describe it, is kind of wide open except for the opposite wall, which had which had the altar, and then the two kind of little alcoves. Um, but there, other than that, this room is very largely wide open. Oh, uh, looks like I'm staying where I am then. Yeah. And it's about a fifty by forty room. Uh, okay. Then that is Hager's turn. Next is Vanifer. Vanifer will, see you guys are still all bunched up together nicely, It's going to cast another fireball at you guys. Everyone needs to give me a dexterity saving throw. All right. Uh, since it's a magical effect, I have advantage. Nineteen. Nat 20, thank you. Presuming a goodness. 12 doesn't do it, but a 20 does, I think. Mm. Uh, the, the, the three numbers I've heard so far all succeed. Oof. Um, 14. That is a fail, unfortunately. Uh, Grunkin, I'm going to 19. use my uh, burst hold on, of hold on, Hold on, Grunkin, what do you got? Uh, you said deck save? Yes. Uh, so 20 all together. All right. Uh, sounds like everyone but Heek Pot. Uh, oh, no, no. I was going to say, I'm going to use a Flash of Genius, and I'm going to uh, help out uh, Heek Pot by giving him a plus four to that roll. Uh, so that brings what to an 18? 18. 18. I believe, is that yeah. That turns into a success. All right. So everyone will take half of 20 fire damage. Uh, so that'd be 10 fire damage. Is that halved again if you got the resistance? If you have resistance to fire, then yes, it'd be halved again to five. Okay, cool. Fucking dope. Sweet. Mm -hmm. uh, and then she will uh, back up kind of behind where the two fire elementals are uh, and stay like in the back uh, recess of the room as far away as possible from you guys. Uh, okay, that's Vanifer's go. Next is the Elementals. Uh, the Elementals will move forward with their speed of 50 and get all up in your guys' grill. Uh, no! Hot! 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 Uh, and actually, <laughs> uh, it will enter the spaces uh, of uh, Grunken and Snek. Uh, and uh, both of you will take uh, five fire damage, and uh, you both catch fire. Uh, oh, God. Running that up or down? For half? half, for half damage, rounding that up or down? Round down. Okay. Uh, and then you were both are on fire. Uh, then um, they both will take their flame tornado-ish bodies and just start pummeling you with their touch attack. Uh, but two attacks on each of you. Uh, so Grunkin first. Okay. Uh, does a fourteen hit you? Does not. Okay, and the next one's a natural twelve. Uh, <laughs> oops. Well, so, all 
right then. You'll I mean, take a special fucking net twenty. 20 uh, you'll take twenty six fire damage. Whoa. Of course I will. I mean, I uh, the two on. I'm going to take twenty six damage anyway. You know. What? Uh, does a twenty hit you? Might was that to me? No, snack. Oh, oh yeah, so twenty hits. Okay. And the other one was a miss. Uh, so you'll take... Oh, wow. Really low. You'll take six fire damage. I will take three fire damage. Awesome. All right. Uh, okay. That is the elemental's turn. Uh, Nemesis, it is your turn. Um, can, I, can I walk away from these people? From the people on fire? Yeah. Yes, you can. Yeah, the, this, this, this flaming clusterfuck is not for me. <laughs> it's probably a good idea. So I, I am going to very casually just walk away. Uh, okay. Kind of parallel around the room. So whereas, you know, we're in a side entrance or we're across from Vanifer, I'm going to be not going near Vanifer, but keeping an eye on her the whole time. And just okay. like... Uh, Pulling various gems and implements, fucking with my jewelry as I go, and I'm gonna say, Vanifer, you know, I came a very, very long way to deliver you a prophecy, and I would appreciate if maybe you, like, let me tell you about it before you kill all of these people that work for me. It's, it's quite inconvenient. I have received the only prophecy I need directly from the Fire Lord, and he had told me to bring him from the Fire Plane to ours to bring about curative flames to the world and end it in ash. So, I'm good on prophecies, thanks. Can I? Oh, let's, let's just fire all that. Let's dump through that. Never mind. Oh, well. I didn't live in a volcano for 26 years, huffing fumes to not see the same future. But the thing is, you got it backwards. And then with this assemblage of gems and like brilliant gold jewels and baubles, uh, they are going to drain of their color and turn black and then turn to sludge and drip through my fingers and into the floor. And then over next to Vanifer, uh, from that floor is going to spring forth a clay golem, blackened with ink and ash. Okay. It's not gonna end in fire, bitch. There, her eyes actually, she's gone from this kind of like, okay, I'm just gonna purge these fools in flame like everyone else, to her eyes do kind of widen a little bit in terror as this large clay golem just is there right next to her. And she's just like, uh. I'll keep track of its hit points and stuff if you like. Okay. Acts immediately after I do. Okay. Uh, so are you done? Yes. All right. Clay golem time then. Clay Gollum uh, is going to multi-attack her because it's right there. That sounds good, yeah. That's, that is two slams uh, at my spell mo attack modifier to hit. Okay. Which is going to be... Get my stats right. Okay. Um, does a... Does an 18 hit? Uh, normally, yes. But as her reaction, she will cast shield. And as the strike is coming down to bop her right in the head, there's a shimmering force arcane barrier that blocks it. You see it flare dramatically as the fist connects with it. She kind of like freaks out a little bit as you know something is about to crush her puny little head. <clears throat> How about a 24 with the shield? That, that would hit. Yes, it does. All right. That's what I like to see. That's what I like to see. <laughs> uh, she is going to take... Let's see. That's plus eight. A total of 16 points of damage from that slam. Nice. 
so the uh, the second the first fist is still pounding on the shield and it's kind of flaring and the and the clay is kind of molding around this uh, bubble almost that she's encased in and the second one just moves underneath in this uppercut fashion where the shield can't quite reach and is able to just punch her right in the chest and some of the clay is stuck to her and you see that slowly burst into fire and melt off her as well uh, and then if there is at any point like a clear means of escape the golem's just gonna slide to that side and position itself between her and the way out okay yeah there doesn't seem to be immediately any way out of this room besides the one you came down really would like it if you heard me out oh but i can beat you into submission first and that'll be more fun for everyone <laughs> she's she's catching her breath because that blow knocked whenever she's like suffer bring it bitch uh anything else Nemesis? that's it keek pot it is your turn you are currently on fire i'm on fire you're on fire Bye. Uh, and being on fire at the start of your turn. Bad things happen. Take one fire damage. No! Take one You're going fire to damage. burn to death in 37 rounds. <laughs> one yes. fire damage. An hour from now, you will be feeling quite unpleasant. <laughs> Take that, and why don't you? <laughs> but the heat is unbearable, as this living flame is currently just, like, wrapped around you. It feels like you're wearing a suit of fire. Like it's grappling me? No, no, it is not. Technically not grappling. It is just occupying the same space as you. <clears throat> well. I see. You say? Ooh, what they say? I didn't realize I was on fire. I thought that was the other two. I apologize. Oh, wait. It did go after Grunkin and Snake. That is my bad. Take back that one fire damage. Okay. You're fine. Okay, because I was. It was. <laughs> get that hit point back. No. Safe. Get the hit point back. You're right. I thought I attacked you and Grunkin. I. It was Snack and Grunkin. Well, it was just because right. that changed. So that, that was just going to change what I, I was. I needed to reevaluate. Like, do I just want to? No. You, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> no, you are not no. on fire. And uh, is not. Yeah. It was the other okay. two. No problem. It's so <laughs> ingrained in Patty's soul. It just goes after. Yes, me. I'm so used Patty's to so used trying to, to kill after you me specifically, like, which I get. Blew my mind. I didn't attack you. <laughs> so that's how we know we're getting on the inside. Oh, <laughs> He's starting to confuse us with Steve. Oh, gosh. Oh. <laughs> All right. Then uh, I, you know, I will move so that they're, you know, I'm at a safe mage distance, you know, do the, do sure. the tactical maginess. Um, and let's see, my best offensive spell is probably going to be this one. I'll do Tasha's Mind Whip. Okay. Uh, are you doing it on Vanifer? I assume I am gonna do it on Vanifer. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna mind whip Vanifer. Um, okay. So, um, I again, um, in in my features have kind of started to slip and melt away, and my face is becoming paler, and I'm stretching out and being, you know, kind of longer and ganglier um, as I start to take more of the true form of changeling, um, and. I'll kind of just um, kind of whip my hand around and I just make this whipping motion um, as this uh, cracking white energy shoots out from me and tries to um, whip into her brain. Okay. All right. Target must make an intelligence saving throw. Well, she probably has a pretty good intelligence. Uh... She rolled an 11. Mm. However, she will use one of her legendary resistances to succeed. Okay. Okay. Well, that's good. You burned her resistance. Burn those resistances. All right. 
So, on a failed save, blah, 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 blah. On a successful save, target takes half as much damage and suffers none of the other effects. He's going to take half of three to okay. six psychic damage. All right. All Give, right. Sock it to me. She takes half of 11 psychic damage. Uh, okay, so five. She's taking that much damage now. Okay. All you see, right. Uh, you see the uh, the the uh, psychic lash kind of wrap around her head, and she's, uh, uh, and then the lash dissipates. She just stares at you, and you just you can see like there's actual fire coming out of her eyes now. Ooh, dope. Uh, anything else? He oh, tried to move to a safe mage distance. Used a pressure spell. I don't have anything. But oh, wait, hold on. I lied to you. Wait. Hold up. Hold up. Hey. Oh, Heart of the Storm again. Nope, that's not the one that I wanted. I want Ritual Tilt, because change of shapeshifter. Damage. Okay, so I'm going to do a couple of things. So I apologize, because I rolled a one on one of those damage die, and I don't want to do that. I'm going to spend a sorcery point to re-roll that. Uh, okay. I totally forgot that I have these abilities, because I don't usually play sorcerers. So I rolled a four, a six, and a one. So I'm sitting at 10 damage. So I'm going to re-roll 1d6. Pfft, get the fuck out of here. God damn it. I rolled a 2. Um, so she actually takes one more damage. Maybe 12, 6. Yeah, half of 12 yeah. is 6. All right. Okay. So I get to do that just to do that. Um, that doesn't actually take up another thing. When you change your spell, it's just the heart of the storm. You gain resistance to storm guide. So it comes with weather. The nun blows. Spell where is mm -hmm. the... Mm -hmm. Where is... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ah! There it is. You gain resistance to lightning and thunder damage. Whenever you start... Casting a spell of first level or higher that deals lightning or thunder damage. I don't have any spells that deal lightning or thunder damage. Carry on, my wayward son. I wasted all of your time because Carry I forgot that I had, this sheet does not have spells that match <laughs> my <laughs> class abilities. Yeah, they are totally perfect. It's I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Snack, it is your turn. wrong with our sheets. Oh my gosh. I'm all right. So, uh... I said to you this earlier, Patty, but I made my little Eldritch Cannon onto my shoulder as a tiny construct. And so I'm going to kind of step outside the Fire and Elemental and... Uh, oh, you are the one who's on fire. Aha. Yes, you it was me. You will take damage to the start of your yes. turn. Aha, you will take six fire damage. I will take three fire damage. <clears throat> and uh, you are still on fire. Yes. Uh, so I am going to attack this. Uh, I'm stepping towards uh, v v v v v I can't remember the name. Vanifer. The, okay. Vanifer. Yeah. I'm stepping towards Vanifer, and then I'm going to have the little turret just kind of <laughs> point back towards the fire elemental and attack. Okay. And it's a ranged spell attack, so that is I'm sorry, seven. Does a 26 hit it? 26 does hit at the elemental. Okay, it takes two die eight force damage. That's an eight. And that's a one, so nine. And it gets pushed back 10 feet. Okay. And then I'm going to use pyrotechnic. Wait, uh, yeah, the Grunkin's not out of the flame, is he? No. Sorry, buddy. I'm going to use pyrotechnics on myself to extinguish that fire. And I'm going to generate smoke out of 20, or 20 foot radius around me. Okay. And I'm going uh, so to run. So you are extinguished from the flame. And I'm going to run to the edge of that smoke, but not out. So I'm still covered. Okay. Uh, the belief smoke is light obscurity. Uh, so you're not yeah. completely, uh, bl like, you're not com in complete obscurity. It's light obscurity. Uh, let me just double check that. Unless it says otherwise. I didn't remember. That's And I already closed it out. So let me. <clears throat> Because, like, fog cloud is complete obscurity. Uh, just, just smoke from pyrotechnic. It says heavily, it says heavily obscured. obscured. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. So heavily obscured. 
Uh, okay. Yeah, it's 20 uh, feet around where I was. Yep. So uh, it is, you are in that, so you are technically blinded in heavy obscurity. You are blind. Yeah, but nobody right can now. see me as well, so. Correct. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, that is in the snack's turn. Grunkin, it is your turn. You are on Being fire. Sneaky snack. Uh, damage, please. One fire damage. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I was going to ask for Steve's roll, but I got it. So there we go. Uh, all right. So uh, your own kid is giving it. <laughs> uh, and he is going to walk out of the flames and kind of twist his, his axe. And you're just going to see, like, him bang the ad, twist the axe and start slamming it on the ground as he goes and you're going to see these energy shock waves just start start reverberating from the axe and he's going to take a swing at her uh, he's going to cast thunderous smite on his axe okay. before he does as a bonus action and then he is going to make a weapon attack okay uh, that is plus uh, let's make sure I'm right on that math because it's been 30 seconds since I swung an axe. Why wouldn't I be right on it? Uh, so 17 plus 8? Uh, 25. Yep, that uh, hits. Uh, damage. Even through, her, even through her shield. Nice. 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 Um, so we are going to do 2d6 plus 1d12 plus 6. So start with the smite damage. No, just two, not three. Thank you. Uh, Eleven damage on that. Roll that pretty well. Uh, this is going to be thunder damage, and she's going to have to succeed at a strength saving throw DC twelve. Uh, she rolled a not DC. She rolled another eleven though, but she will use her last legendary resistance to succeed. Nice, 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 nice. Does she succeed automatically? Uh, with her, let yes, she succeeds on that. Yeah, Good legendary is awesome. Good for her. But, but she's out, so she doesn't so, have any more. Uh, another 13 just physical damage. Uh, okay. And then uh, I have one more attack action. Okay. That's going to be a natural one. That does not hit, unfortunately. Alrighty. Question, then. question, question. Yes. Mm -hmm. If you are adjacent to a, a creature and your ally is also adjacent and threatening that creature in melee, do you get advantage? Because there's a golem right there. Uh, no. You're thinking okay. of there's no flanking rules in 5e. Uh, okay. You're thinking of rogues still would get sneak attack in that, in gotcha. this, in that example. Uh, but gotcha, 5e gotcha. does not have flanking rules. Pathfinder uh, rolled over. Go on. Yeah. Anything else, Grunkin? Uh, that's my movement, bonus action, action, so we're good. Okay. Uh, then back to the top. Uh, Hagius, it is your turn. Gnarly. All right. Let's shoot some holes in these tieflings. Or wait, satyrs. Yeah, they're totally satyrs. <laughs> Go for it. Oh, that one definitely doesn't hit. I rolled a three. Okay, and try maybe, again. Maybe, let's see here. There's a 21. 21 is just enough to get through her armor and her shield. <gasps> okay, cool. So damage on that is 10, piercing. 10, nice. <laughs> this arrow, once again, this one embeds in the center of her chest uh, and it gets through her armor. And once again, as the fire kind of, uh, it, it sets the arrow on fire, turning into ash. But you see now the fire that's been leaking out of her eyes starts to engulf more of her face and it's just burning away her flesh. And where her skull would be, it's just fire that is weeping out of her face. No, no, I will not let you ruin what I have worked on for so long. The fire cult will bring divine fire to this world 
I mean, like, you're already hot. You don't need to bring divine fire. It's fine. Aegis, oh, you are thanks. such a fire! fire! <laughs> uh, anything else on your turn? I'm going to use my bonus uh, thingamabob, Slayer's Prey. Okay. Uh, designate one creature I can see within 60 feet. And the first time each turn that I hit that target with a weapon attack, it takes an extra 1d6 damage. So it'll be for the next time I, I go, but... Okay. We can say, say that you did that first if you want to go ahead and roll the d6. Oh, yeah, sure. Uh, it's just an order of operations thing, so say you did that first. <laughs> Only a one. <laughs> hey, one is good. All right, uh, that is the end of your turn. It is now Vanifer's turn. She will take that fancy dagger she had on her hip, pull it out, immediately blazes to life, uh, and then she kind of looks at it deep in, in, you know, where her eyes and everything were, it's just fire, but she can see that she's looking at it. She twirls it around in her fingers, and she stabs herself in the chest with it. And it buries deep. And you see all the flames in this room start rushing to that dagger into it, including the fire elementals, including the fire that's still on Grunken. You're no longer on fire. It all starts rushing into that blade, and she just starts laughing maniacally. <laughs> The Lord is coming! As the fire that's been in where her eyes are just finishes engulfing her face, engulfing her hair, engulfing her body, and then her fire is sucked into the dagger as well as it question. falls. Yes. Uh, we're at the top of a new round. Can I use my reaction to cast counter spell? There is no spell being cast, fortunately. So Damn, hold on to the spell slot. That would have been really funny. cool. Been There's no spell funny. being cast, unfortunately. Uh, so hold on to the, hold on to the spell slot. <clears throat> the, uh, the dagger falls to the ground point first and just starts spinning slowly. And the fires that had sucked in start coming out of it. It spins in a small little fire tornado starts to form until it's larger and larger and larger. And it, this room uh, that has like a 40 foot high ceiling this tornado reaches the top of the ceiling. It starts, it goes out about 20 feet diameter, all fire. And then a face forms in the fire tornado. I am the Lord of Flames. Who summons me? Snack is going to reach its head out and see what's actually going on. Oh shit. Go back in smoke. Oh, man. I hate when girls die. Uh, and that's actually the, where we're leaving. We're leaving a cliffhanger uh, as we reached our time. Boo. You Damn motherfucker! Boo. Boo this man. We do know that the mercenaries are live through this encounter as they meet our heroes later on, but how do they deal with the Lord of Flames from the Fire Elemental Plane? What did they do? Who knows? That is a story our players will have to ask the mercenaries some other time. <clears throat> something we thank about you for mayonnaise. joining us tonight. Yeah, something with mayonnaise. Maybe. Thank you for joining us tonight for our one shot. We apologize it's not our usual story, but we hope you enjoyed the silliness of our mercenary one shot. You got to meet and meet the wonderful mercenaries that have accompanied our heroes on their journey to find the floating isle. I, of course, have been your DM tonight, Patrick, aka Patty Shakes. That's where you can find me on the internet. Uh, once again, we're going to thank our sponsors, Hit Point Press, Gem Hammer and Sons, Chiyu Empire, Dungeon Crate, Onyx Path Publishing for making the Scarred Land setting, D&D 5e Wizards of the Coast for D&D Beyond, and the wonderful I Stole This Temple wholeheartedly, 100% without editing, from the Prince of Apocalypse, uh, uh, um, what's it called? Uh, adventure Book. So if you liked this story, you liked this uh, dungeon they went through, go get Prince of the Apocalypse, that's where you can find it. Uh, and uh, yeah, we hope you join us next time. Let's, let's go around again. Our players will introduce themselves and say goodbye one more time. Go ahead and do that. Hello, everybody. My name is Steve. You can find me on the internet at Voodoo Arcade. Um, tonight I played Peckpot, the Changeling Sorcerer. Um, and the next time you will find me will be all goddamn day almost tomorrow 
give or take. <laughs> um, I know I start my day in Ambrose's one sheet. Not a fairy tale, but a fairy tale thing of a majig. Um, I get a four hour block off. And then I play for nine straight hours, and I'm being attacked by a, a birdie slash nemesis. Okay, I'll, I I think that's my cue to shut the fuck up. <laughs> Did it tomorrow! I play a lot of games. I'll be tired most of it. Good luck, buddy. <laughs> I can't tell if you're done talking or not. Never. Finished. All right. Oh, okay, alright. Uh, so yeah, I am J3 Billion, otherwise known as John. I have a wonderfully great time playing Grunkin, our little chaos on a stick with a hammer. Um, feel like, I feel like he was a lot of fun. I think I might be, re might be revisiting this character arc in the near future. And tomorrow you'll be able to see me, uh, I believe, from 1 to 5. So, uh, yeah, be there, be square. I'll certainly be watching. Friends, tonight I was playing Nemesis NRA, the fume-huffing heavy metal sorceress of ruin. But normally, yeah. my name's just Birdie, and I'm here on Friday nights, and I'll be here next Friday night. And I hope to see you when we resume our main adventure or finish this one. I'm not really sure which it's going to be? The answer is yes. Dope. Hey everybody! I have enjoyed playing my surfer dude, satyr who thinks he's a tiefling. That, that, was, that was fun. It was very fun. And you can find me all over the internet as Am Changeling, because it me, Am Changeling, Ambrose. And uh, you can also find me on Etsy at Neat and Co Designs. And you can find me playing D. I will be uh, storytelling. Uh, my dog is very displeased with this. The uh, one page, one shot. The witch is dead. Tomorrow, at a time. Long live the witch. No, no, the witch is dead. Sorry. You have to. You have to figure out. Which, which old witch? Long the, live the the witch. Not, not the wicked witch. Are you a good Adelaide witch? Adelaide. Are the you a pastor, bad witch? The good woman of the woods. I like it. I like it. Wait, is it me? It is you. You're the last it's one. It's me. Okay. Uh, howdy, all. I have been me and also Snick. And you can find me online at Sword of Sullied. And tomorrow or today in like eight hours patty and i are gonna hopefully not die but oh, probably don't worry no we'll be fine <laughs> <clears throat> no no i was gonna say i know i'm gonna live i'm worried about you guys uh yeah <clears throat> uh yes um what am i looking for here uh yeah so yes thank you players uh as this is a one shot we will not be doing a, a, a group vote tonight you all get a vote from me for being awesome and rolling with the punches and playing a totally random character you had no control over uh so you can carry that on to uh next week's session uh usually this is the part of the show where i would tell you what's coming up next week uh on our wonderful uh vocal tales schedule but uh, i'm not going to tell you not because we don't have a schedule because we do we have a schedule all the way into the new year but rather because tomorrow is well technically today is a very important day it is our extra life, not just our extra life day, it is extra life day in general, uh, where everyone uh, who loves children, which is everybody, uh, is going to do a 24 hour stream uh, in support of the extra life charity, uh, which helps uh, children uh, in need and uh, giving them uh, resources to enjoy their stays while at uh, children's hospitals around the world. Um, uh, the money you donate to us will go to local uh, hospitals that our cast live near and directly support our communities, uh, which is totally awesome. Extra Life is a fantastic charity. Um, I know there's a lot of people out there that do their work on looking up charities, by all means do independent research, but Extra Life is definitely one of those good charities that everything does go to the cause. 
Um, if you want to help out, you can. Our, we're going to be posting the link over and over tomorrow, all throughout the day in our Twitch chat. Uh, but you can go to our Extra Life page, our team page, Purple Tales, uh, and you can donate uh, to. We don't have a. We're not going to. We have just kind of a goal, but we're just really anything you can give is great. We know it's getting close to the holidays, so budgets are tight. But remember, uh, it is all because of the children. Mm -hmm. Uh, <laughs> tomorrow, if you're interested in what we're playing, where did that get posted? It just got posted, but the order of shit was tomorrow. Uh, general chat. Was it general? Okay. Uh, tomorrow, if you're interested, the way it's going to go is uh, starting at, and we're doing 24 hours starting at 9 a.m., so in eight hours. Uh, as Devin said, we're doing a level 25 E one shot. It's going to be run by Space Lord Pajamas. Myself will be in it. Devin will be in it. I am making a totally broken level 20. Level 19 wizard, level one cleric. Uh, just from perspective, uh, my wizard has unlimited castings of shields and misty step. I ride a dragon. I have a simulacrum that can, is just gonna be a counter spell monkey. Uh, and I have like a 25 base AC. So if you're ready for those kinds of shenanigans at nine <laughs> o'clock in the morning, hey, you should totally tune in. Just out of curiosity, what's your lowest save? Uh, I think I have like a plus three to a strength save. I think that's my lowest. But like my uh, my like intelligence save is like a plus fifteen or something stupid like that. Plus uh, seven, <laughs> lowest. Uh, after that, we're playing Shattered from one to five p.m. Then it's uh, Ambrose's game. Grant show it's one page one shot from five to nine p.m. Then the night crew comes in doing Solemn Veil vale from nine p.m. to one a.m. Lankmar from one a.m. to five a.m. For you daring ones who want to stay up for them. And then uh, Knights Black Agents run by Steven from 5 a.m. to 9 a.m. to close this out. Uh, I pulled the lucky straw of doing the first show and the last show. So I'll be there. Uh, but yes, you, uh, we're going to be posting, like I said, we're posting everywhere uh, for Extra Life tomorrow. Thank you all for tuning in tonight. We can't wait to see you in eight hours as we start our Extra Life 24 hour stream. Uh, but until next time, stay safe, stay awesome, stay adventurous, make good choices, wear a mask. <laughs>